And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new and improved semi Geek Watch, the a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with and with me I have one, two, three, four good brothers. Ha 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 ha! We have the rec the. The man who is who is probably going to be going through who's probably going to be going through game seven therapy so shortly, and the man of a thousand magical girls, good brother Cure. We have the living stack of the living stack of comics and the eye of Sauron, and the man who is usually late and gay, good brother Doku. We have the man taking over your anime out, over, under a pair of star-shaped sunglasses, and. And guiding you through all your VTubers, Good Brother Shades. And we have the Man of a Thousand Runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, Good Brother Xanatrix. How the fuck we doing tonight? Oh, have I been looking forward to this! <laughs> I am still gratified by the fact that at least it was in a vault form. <laughs> so... Let me let me explain a bit. Let me explain a bit of the thing, because you're probably noticing what happened to the dojo in the background. Well, a w well, a while back, I asked Zeltrax if he could if he could whip together a image for me. And the approach that I had is some of you may have seen the round table meme that's that's made the rounds. Well, given the given the motif that I have with the monastery and with Geek Watch. I decided to do our own little spin on it, and went and went with a bunch went with a bunch of characters. Now I will note the reason I went with mostly Common Rider and Garo is because I needed, ar I needed armor like characters, and while there's certain while there's certainly those in Super Sentai, they are a minority, and in even more even and the ones that are are a, a lot of them are in the Battleizer category, which um. I, I can't. I have not found a bat. I've not found a battleizer design that I actively liked. <laughs> um, they I've, are uh, few and far between. I've um, tol the best ones I've tolerated because all of them have some kind of problem. Whether you have the flop, whether you have flopping shoulder pads or other ridiculousness like, say, the skis, <laughs> or. I was gonna bring up the, I was gonna bring up that one in Operation Overdrive, but just being in Operation Overdrive is punishment enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, the setup that we so I ended up use I ended up use using several of several of the people in the in the watch for this particular experiment. Um, now, from right to left, it goes as it goes as follows. On the far right, we we. With um cr with Cross Evil, we have we have Xana. Like I said, I'm gratified that it's at least in Avolto form because Avolto was honestly the best antagonist in, <laughs> in quite a few years. I and he's him. the biggest troll and common rider. Let's be honest here, and it fits you like a glove. Truth be told, I initially wanted to use um Zaya, but we couldn't find the model for that. So. I would have told you to fuck straight off if you had. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better than that asshole. <laughs> You've That's we it. already know this. You so said you were better you. than Guy. You didn't say you were better than the president of Zaya. Yeah, the black one, not the gold, not the golden dildo. I don't give a fuck. I'm better than Zaya Corporation as a whole. <laughs> <laughs> um. Next is shades with um with. Cyclone Joker double and and wielding the Prism Bicker, or the Sword of and the Prism Bicker. And trust me, me and him had already had a discussion about the fact that he's giving the Prism Bicker to his base form. <laughs> your old your old avatar used the double driver and had and had Cyclone Joker and somebody in, and I will note somebody in the old um, Big Eyes Small Mouth review did call me out and asked and asked me to stat Common Rider double and I said no. <laughs> at least at least not yet that's trying to trying to do trying to stat just the base forms all nine of them is going to be crunchy no matter what system i use and god help me if i try to use rider for that 
<laughs> yeah, we learned our lesson the hard way on that shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, Maddie is Common Rider Beast. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I ended up going with Beast. I just, I just felt it was appropriate. So the problem is, there's not, there's not a whole lot of writers I can use that ha- that utilize wrestling moves. When it comes to Toku utilizing wrestling moves, that's mostly an Ultraman thing. You know, thinking about it now, we should have given him hyperform for this because of the tassels alone. That would have been just so perfect. <laughs> would have, but um, I don't like I don't like how hyperform is designed. I'll just say it, blue mm-hmm. blue outfit because he's the blue guy. Mm-hmm. He's he's another blue guy, and the tassels because well, wrestling reference. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Akira is Oz Shauta wield, wielding the wielding the. Metajaliber, or however however it's pronounced, that thing is Metajaliber. Really, Metajaliber. That thing is really weirdly spelled. A lot of these names are. <laughs> um, this one was not my cool first story. choice. This was my this was my fourth choice. The first choice that I wanted to go with was um, the most recent upgrade form for Blades in um, Common Rider Saber. Um, but we couldn't find the model for that. So I went with my second ch- hmm? Tategame model. Yeah. So we went so my second choice was Ray from the Kiva movie. No luck there. My third choice was Grease Blizzard. Still no luck. <laughs> so I said, you know what, fuck it. If I can't find something ice themed, I'll go with something water themed, and I went with Sha Uta. Also, I think it's a uh, Shouta. Shouta. Or Shouta. It's mm. Shouta because that's how it's pr- sp- pronounced in the show. Sh- mm. Shouta. Yeah. Um, I went with Garo. Um, wanted to get wanted to get Gar- wanted to get the cape, but no dice on that. Um, Joel Lep- Joel, our Emperor of the Fist Throne, has Agito Shining, and the reason he's wielding the wielding wielding the sword from Agito Flame is because. The shining caliber would not work in this particular setup. It's too curved. Um, Flutter is the chicken bastard. <laughs> <laughs> no explanation needed there. Mm-hmm. JT, um, because because of the because of because of the amount of highway star jokes we've made, and we're not, and I'm referencing the song, not the JoJo reference. Um. I gave him. I gave him drive Trider on. The, uh, the drive. Uh, the steering wheel sword is so fucking stupid. <laughs> you no know argument from me. It's, a, it's. I'm gonna turn the wheel to do a slash in a curve. No, just throw your curve your arm as you slash, dick. It's a. I needed. I needed a sword equivalent. That's the one I had to go with. I know. Um. He's not mad at you. He's mad at Drive. Let's move yes. on. Um, Doku, I gave I gave um Zanget Zangetsu Kachidoki arms. Simply because of the, so I will admit the inspiration was some of the long arguments you've had about construction with when it comes to katanas. Uh, fair. And and Fair. the fact that and the fact that you're and the fact that you're one of the few people I know who knows how to use it. Yeah, it's like uh, I can't disagree. Oh. And Ash I gave um Wizard Flame Dragon. And there were a Which few probably- others like I should probably specify that when he said right to left earlier, people, he meant from our viewpoints. Yeah. For y'all, it's left to right. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a manga there, Monk. <laughs> Old habits die hard. I re- besides <laughs> I besides, given what given what I've been re- given what I've been reading, old habits really die hard. <laughs> but it's but it's the but the reason I went with Common Rider with a lot of these is what is again, I needed ar- I needed armor, and you're gonna see that more often than, with that than anything else. I just I mean maybe if I wanted to stretch it, I could have used a few entrance entrances from Metal Hero, but that didn't see but I didn't feel right doing it, and I'm pretty sure it'd be hard to get models for that. 
Yeah. Like maybe if maybe if we maybe if I got lucky I could find a model for Gavon and that's a massive if. I really like Space Sheriff Gavin. That's a really good set of uh middle hero shows. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, we Oh plus let, let's not forget um Shays, let's not forget who the Japanese Chuck Norris is. <laughs> <laughs> Metaphorically speaking, who do you think who do you think I would be, Mildred? Um <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> I knew I it. said trouble. Um Have you played Tokimeki Crisis? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I can kinda argue with that. <laughs> Uh, I needed that. Over the week I've had, I fucking needed that. <laughs> I mean, let's just uh. Over that, like a rake, didn't I? Yes, you did. Uh... But it is fun. It is funny that we're, it is funny that we're dealing with that we're dealing with a lot of Toku talk this week, because ladies and gentlemen, we have another we have another case of a reconstruction we'll be doing. Because for this week, all of us in the Geek Watch, we are all travelers. But are all of us trying to destroy the world? <laughs> or is that just me? <laughs> this week, our one of our mo one of our more interesting challenges yet, we will be attempting to reconstruct Common Rider Decade, and. This is going to be a ch this is obviously going to be a challenge because Decade is a series with baggage. It is the shortest hit, um Common Rider series so far. At managing managing to beat out Amazon's throne. But this is a series again that has baggage and and was a very and was a very troubled production. And for details on that I'm going to pass that over to Good Brother Shades. Ah, all right. All right, let's do this. So, basic story that we know we, that of Common Rider Decade is Tsukasa Kadoya ha has has some con has not had memories of his past. Finds out that he finds a mysterious driver when monsters attack that allows him to not only transform into a hero but can transform into many heroes because he has the car special cards that can allow him to transform into pretty much every common rider in the entire uh, franchise. And yes, that will later include future riders thanks to the Neo Deca driver, but we're not talking about that right now. We're mm -hmm. mainly the original intent was supposed to be a celebration of the Heisei era as common rider decade name implies is a, is the 10th Heisei common rider series. So it was designed to celebrate that and more or less was designed to kind of be an end cap to the first wave of Heisei riders because of a lot of the damage that was done in the ad in the aftermath of Kamen Rider Ryuki. Go see our reconstruction on that for more information on how that fucked everything up. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of issues with behind the scenes production and it really comes down to two names that you can blame for the, a lot of the troubles this series had. Now, the first is a name we've brought up many uh, brought up before in our Kamen Rider Ryuki reconstruction, Shinichi Shirakura. Because this was in a big anniversary series, he was a lot more hands-on than usual. However, there is another name that we can really point a lot of the blame at for this particular fuck-up. Because this name has been involved in pretty much... In fact, this is one of those names that pretty much 90% of the bad shit that's happened with Kamen Rider, his name somehow comes up. We, I'd like to introduce you to the name Shoji Yanamura. Now, fair being fair here, in the early, in, in, it's, in, when it comes to Kamen Rider, he actually did have a good start off because he wrote Kamen Rider Kabuto, which, as someone who's actually watched Kabuto, wasn't really all that bad. It was, it was pretty good. Perfect. Yeah, it was pretty good. And when you look at his anime production, and now when we as we mentioned as we uh, tried to mention with another writer, we'll get to another day. 
Anime work, it's a little, it's obviously not as fair to judge that because they're just adapting other people's work 90% of the time. But regardless, his adaptations have been good. Uh, notable names including Monster Rancher, uh, Smile Precure, which yeah. was the theory, series that turned into Glitter Force. Whoa, on. We'll get to that another day. Yeah, we'll get to another day. A few episodes, uh, uh, quite a bit of One Piece, Parasite the Maxim, and is currently helming the reboot of Shaman King. And a lot of those are actually really good. So credit where credit is due. His anime work is good stuff. However, outside of Kabuto, his work in Toku has been, well, abysmal would be an understatement. <laughs> Stop you there for a second, Shades. Would okay. you think that, that his work in anime is better because he has more framework to work with, much like some other writers we've discussed in the past. Well, one writer we tried to discuss in the past but didn't quite get to yet. We, but I, yeah, I do agree with you. Yes, this is a case that I think because he had something to work off of and had to adapt him instead of just making his own stuff, I think he did better off. But yeah. As uh, the, the the biggest example I can think of in his anime there that's probably the most impressive to me is Parasite the Maxim. That manga's been finished for ages. All he and had to do was follow it. Though he did do some stuff that was actually inventive with that as he actually oh, yeah. adapted certain aspects to it. Like the fact that he actually that he had the main character use the internet to look up his situation as opposed to how it was in the past in the original yeah, manga. He, he, did, he did modernize, which was made perfect sense. Yeah, but it beyond was that, right. <laughs> yeah, beyond that, it was he followed the story given to him and made it look good, got, got the story beats right, made it feel like the manga did. So I yeah. think it's a little bit of structure went a long way for him. That being said, his Toku work, as you're going to learn, his work on Kamen Rider Decade had a lot of problems. And then he went on to go on and then he went on to write pretty much every single shit movie in Kamen Rider's history, including all of the spring movies, all of the superhero Tyson movies. That's sad. There, there were a couple good movies amongst the pile. Tyson Zetto was the most watchable of the four. That is the only one that doesn't have outright disastrous problems with it. All of the other ones were immediate, were below average at best. Jade, you know what the sad part is? Mm. It's sad when the Pretty Care had better spring movies than the Tyson movies. Sad but true. And yes, it was Sh uh, Shoji Yanomura who wrote what is, in my opinion, the absolute worst Kamen Rider movie in existence, Kamen Rider Tyson. What? What, that, what about what, 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 what movie is that? I've never heard of that movie, Chase. <laughs> I see what I, you're doing. I, 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 stumped. That that's a movie that exists. Huh. I see you have blocked it from your memory, and I don't entirely blame you. But unfortunately, well, we have to acknowledge it. You you did you did make me a Volto, so uh, I can kind of erase it from existence for myself. But yeah, hey, also. No, actually, he was involved in the Spectre V Cinema. And yeah, I, I still to this day say, while Spectre V Cinema was bad, Kamen Rider Tyson did more damage to the franchise. Ah. Because it literally turned the Showa era writers into villains from their actions in that movie. But, and I bring that up because, well, guess who was involved? Guess what writer had a major involvement in that movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, but getting back to Decade as a whole, the whole idea behind Decade, the main premise was that Tsukasa and his fr his team, his friends at this photography uh, studio, at the Hikari Photography Studio, mm -hmm. would some be able to travel between the different between different Common Rider worlds to basically help restore his ability to transform into them and find uh, Tsukasa's original world since even the world he starts at in the beginning of the series is not his mm -hmm. and of course the main the first this is kind of split up into two arcs when you really break it down 
You have the Nine Worlds art, where Decade goes between all of the different common, the Heisei era common Rider worlds, from Kuga to Kiva. With a twist. With a twist, because yeah, one of the big, one of the earliest problems I had with Decade was that, okay, understandably, they couldn't get every actor from the past Common Rider series to come back. That would have been insane to pull off, especially since. Shows like uh, Kuga and Hibiki had actors who absolutely were never coming back. Mm -hmm. Kuga because Joe Odagiri just didn't like the didn't like the working on the show, so had wanted nothing to do with it. And Hibiki because, well, once again, Shinichiro Kira Shirakura fucked it up so bad that the original actor never wanted to be involved again. I thought it was also because of parent watch groups. No, 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 no. The 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 the, the writing change happened because of low ratings, I believe. And that was, they tried to do a executive shakeup, and we all know how well those go, don't we? Oh yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure anybody yeah. anybody who covers the Fed can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of doing that, they casted new character. They casted uh, basically created alternate worlds, where instead of it being the original worlds we remember, it was AR worlds with different actors playing the different writers. And while most of this, most of them were understandable because the one aspect they did was instead of it being at the end after the stories were done, these were all happening mid-story. In fact, most of them were happening usually at the beginning of the stories. So instead of meeting Kamen Rider Blade after he's gone through the, 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 the battle fight and put it in stalemate, this is early, a new world where now that's no longer a thing. And Kazuma Kanzaki is not the same one we know from the show. So that's the kind of thing we're dealing with here. Mm -hmm. Now, for most of these, that was fine. But then there was one character who I think got the biggest shaft of them all. Well, because of mainly the fact that he had most involvement. And that was Kamen Rider Kuga. Because instead of uh, Yusuke Godai, we now have Yusuke Onodera. Who is a wet blanket? <laughs> what did they do to Kuga, man? Everything and nothing. They did too much. They did way too much. And a lot of these alternate worlds were just very poorly handled. Now, not all of this was... Now, while I mentioned Shoji Yanomar, he was not the only name involved in all of this. In fact, there were a couple other writers that did come back to do some episodes. We had some appearances from uh, Toshiki Inoue for about four episodes. And since two of her ep her particular shows were involved, Yasuko Kobayashi actually mm -hmm. came back to write some episodes. Which... But... Let me guess. She did the Deno one. She did the Deno one, and she did what was a historic first... Like a true historic first, a full person co uh, crossover between Kamen Rider and Sentai as Decade entered the world of Shinkenger. Mm -hmm. And since that was her series, she helped write those. The only other, the other main writer that was there from the beginning was Sho Aikawa, who is a good writer to be fair, but uh, again, you could tell that Shirakura, that Mr. Shirakura, had his hand in the cookie jar this time. I'm going to be uh, honest, the, the Decade Shinkenger crossover episodes were better from the Shinkenger side. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but th this is the kind of thing we were dealing with, was this whole s mess of different writers, different producers, uh, you know, with with Shirakura run, hand, running the show. And yeah, short episode count, which means we didn't really disband on things. And this is before we even get to the second half, the alternate worlds arc. Because after, after Hibiki, after the episodes involving Hibiki, we enter the uh, a different, a whole another set of writer worlds that are not based, that are only partially based on uh, other past uh, series. One of them is actually based on the secondary writer, which that was actually not bad. And I mentioned the Shinkenger one. But we also had ep uh, worlds based on Black and Black RX, Amazon, and things like that. 
until we get to the end, which, oh god, wait till we get to discussing the ending. <laughs> that was a disaster. I'd like to make a confession here. Mm. Color of Decade was my first. I feel for you. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, that's not, is that how it went? And I went back to watch the, the older ones, like, that's not how it went. That, the originals are better. Exactly. You know, I mean, obviously that was going to be the case no matter what, but it's just the way they handled it was so atrocious it made it that much more obvious. But the ending was, they originally had a plan for a big movie ending, but then the last minute they scrapped that and went with another ending, which, oh, fucking Christ! Movie War 2010, decades half at least, was full of so many plot holes and just what-the-fuck moments that it left your head spinning by the end. And what what makes it all the more embarrassing is when you is when you stack that up with the with the double half of Movie War 2010. <laughs> yeah, it was night and fucking day between those two because one, as anyone who knows me, Double's one of my favorite uh, series in the franchise and Double's half was a actually redressing the main plot dealing with the backstory of our heroes, learning about that, and really just diving deep in and developing the characters, especially Shotaro. So, yeah, it was, in every single conceivable way, a much better movie. Mm -hmm. And the crossover moment, again, Double's part in that was the one that actually worked because of how the last scene goes out, where he meets an alternate version of Kamen Rider Skull who actually gives him the validation he's been seeking. Mm -hmm. Decade. <laughs> nope, they didn't even actually end. They were just going to keep going on. Now, much to our dis much to our chagrin. Now, the appearances in all of them in all the movies after that, all of them were shit. All of those movies were shit. I think we've established that. Yeah. He he was what he he but I do th I will give the devil its due in the fact that I did enjoy I did enjoy his presence in the story in Zio. As a they actually made that work. Mm -hmm. So something I want to say as shit as decades writing could be and all of the production shit that went to making it the shortest um series ever. I do have to say that Tsukasa's characterization from Decade itself all through it, all the crossovers he has, he's ever been in up to Zio has been consistent and good. Consistent, yes. And I mainly credit that to his actor Masahiro Inoue, mm -hmm. who was who honestly he gave the, the the role his all and has continued to do so even when he only ever came back because he got a divorce and lost all his money. <laughs> Let's call it spade a spade here. Mm -hmm. Now, to say that it's good, that's it's, where I might have to debate you a little on that one. I, I uh, No, I like the character. I don't like how the character acts in his setting. You know, All right, you know what? When you put it that way, I can see where you're coming from, and I can understand that. It, because the way the character works as the character, you see how good it actually could be in a better setting. Enzio, the better of the two Heisei uh, conglomeration series. Although, yeah. you know, low bars and everything. I don't need to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> but Tukasa in Zio is the most cocky asshole! And you just love it! And it's like, why couldn't you have been that way all the time? Yeah, <laughs> and again with with this sort when it comes to this sort of um when it comes to this sort of crossover th crossover thing you have a lot of cooks in the kitchen and not really a plan, but the thing that did come out of it was the was the idea of um of ta of taking the whole separate worlds of, of the different writers over the years and uniting it. Which was which was ultimately the plan. It can it's kind of hinted with that whole with that tagline at the 
during the episode preview. Um, destroy everything, connect everything. Yeah, because um. the thing about it is, was up until this point, starting with, starting around Agito, every series after that was supposed to take place in its own universe. It was its own world. It had no connections to past writers. And that's why crossovers weren't as easily done in those movies. Though effort, attempts were made, but they kind of failed miserably half the mm -hmm. time. I mean, because the, the, this alternate world theory made it hard for the for uh, continuity to really be a valid thing. That was decades. One of the goals with decade was to end that and actually unite everything under one universe. Pretty much, they were trying to do their own um, Crisis on Infinite Earth type of deal. God, <laughs> didn't say. I'm not saying they succeeded it, but that was the idea. Was that was they what they were trying to do? Mm -hmm. I would say that the that that later on when they with their crossover movies the the ones that were the most entertaining for me were Wizard Gaim and Gaim Drive at least because it's Gaim I'm sorry but Gaim is a masterpiece Gaim is just mm, I love Gaim Gaim's my favorite AC <laughs> series Hey Gaim's a good series I ain't, you ain't getting you ain't getting any argument from me on that one but I can a Butchie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, that 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 there was a lot of things they tried to do with this, and it that's the problem. They tried to do too much, and they didn't have enough time to do it all because of that limited episode count. And you can definitely feel a very rushed production, especially towards the end. Mm -hmm. And there's the other problem of throughout half the series, throughout the majority of the series, up until the halfway point, they didn't have a central antagonist. Like, because they, they like, it took the, and then by the time they introduced one, they just brought Shocker back from the dead, which makes no fucking sense, you know, anything about uh, Kamen Rider's history. Like, Shocker is, should have been well and truly dead. And yet they've kept, and yet Shoji Monomura apparently doesn't know anything else but to keep bringing Shocker back for some fucking reason. Mm -hmm. So, and, but then there was one other character I forgot to mention. Because we, you know, we can talk about Kaito Daiki, who's honestly a slightly better version of Tsukasa, in my personal opinion, though it's still not great. But then you come to Naru Taki. Oh, oh yeah. Useless. The biggest enigma in Kamen Rider history because who the fuck is this guy? Even after several movies and specials, we still don't know what the fuck his deal is. All that we know, all that we know is that he claims to be a prophet. And that's really it. Also, hi, Flutter. Yeah. Oh, yes, you guys just started? We're still or going over the preamble. Or <laughs> but yeah, Narutaki, like, they kept changing what his deal was in every time he pops up. One, you know, one minute he's he, he hates Decade with every fiber of his being. Okay, that pretty much stays consistent because... It does. <laughs> but everything else about him... Like what his actual goal is, what his backstory is, what what anything else about him, no fucking clue. Nope. Yeah. Who, what, when, where, why? Hell, they don't even go into that in the novel, which you'd think you'd think they would, since after series novels are good at revealing shit like that. God yeah. Sake, I I've seen fan fiction where they literally tried to do tried to figure out who the hell he is. The close the the closest that we have is that he he claims that he is a prophet, and even that I can't trust because give because he may he because he may just as well be full of shit. Yeah. And again, as we've stated multiple times now, there is no explanation for Narutaki. None. None. You can look. On any fan site, you can look on, on the Common Writer Wiki. You can look on official materials. Narutaki is a mysterious man. Full stop. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's there's no explanation for this man. Which 
I'm sorry, it, you know, it, it, if done right, that could be a good thing. But here, it's so poorly done, it just leaves us confused. Like, what's the point of having him there if you're not going to fucking do anything? I honestly, when when it was announced that Geo and Decade were doing their final crossover movies together, I was begging. Oh, yeah, terrible special. Ugh. I was begging them for just a something with Narutaki to finally explain, especially when I saw that he was going to be in it. I was begging, just give me something. Nope! Not Instead, a fucking thing! Instead, he's just a referee. Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Yep. Uh, Literally uh, a referee. Literally. Yeah. It, it was mm -hmm. the most pointless cameo you could have ever asked for, so... And, yeah, he was, I mean, and he wasn't even himself half the time. He was the masked man. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, needless to say, you already have an idea of where, where some of our reconstructing is going to be going going to. Mm -hmm. Now, with all all of that said, with, the, with this massive clusterfuck that we've walked into, <laughs> let us have a go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Plumpier. <laughs> oh, 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 my jumping Jesus. <laughs> where, where do we start? Where does one start when examining a train wreck? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's easily. You look for the penny that derailed it. You know, you know despite that being a complete myth. You would you would think I'd have experience with this kind of thing given that I used given that I used to take photos for accident claims. But <laughs> Even when I was doing that, there was there was always there was there were many times where I had to ask, how. Especially w especially when I had to figure out why why the car is com why the car is cut completely in half. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had right. that. I, I don't I think this photo. situation is that clean, Monk. Yeah. I am pretty <laughs> sure that this is a car that somehow split into six or seven whole. Trunk chunks like it looked like something grabbed it with hands and tore it apart. Except there's nothing here that shows how that could happen. All right. Anyway. Anyway. So right off the bat, let's get let's get one let's get. There are two things I need to get out of my I need to get on my system before before we start de before we start delving into the heavy shit. One, we are not touching the opening. The opening is fantastic. Gact can yes. go wrong. Stay. Th we are we are putting that in its own little bubble right over here. Now, as far as the whole thing that they that they did with Gact in that movie, um, we'll get to that later. Yes. Also, we will. oh good. Also, we are not touching Chodeno. Fuck that movie. Fuck it with a brick sideways. <laughs> oh god. It didn't have a damn thing to do in that movie. There, you you, you could literally have took, taken him out completely, and nothing would have changed. And yeah, you could just made that a Deno movie. What the end? Are we touching the end or? No, you know, we'll get to the end. We'll get to the end. There, there's some things we can do with the end, especially if a lot of our changes affect how he en act enters this picture. Okay, but now getting in, getting into the thing, the 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 core thing that we I think that we need to build around is Sukasa. It Sukasa is tra is traveling, trying to find trying to find his trying to find his place and whether or not he is supposed to save the worlds or destroy them which um is this deja zan is this deja vu for us you mean is his name actually kamui shiro and does he wield the giant sword with a star of david on it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> if but, i may go ahead if i may because we actually have a good starting point on one of the biggest fixes we can have. Because one of the first questions we have to ask is, what is going to be the end game for this? Mm -hmm. Like, we know the, the, the goal, the, the setup goal, is traveling through the worlds to find his. But where does that lead him? And honestly, there's one thing Shoji Yonamura did right that could have been a better fix than, than Movie Wars bullshit ending because there was all another decade versus, movie all writers versus the shocker the shocker where he, where as i recall he it's revealed that 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 sukasa is great leader yeah mm -hmm. however i want to throw in a twist to that because it's i i think what we should do 
is not have Sukasa be the great leader in Neo Shocker, but have them think he's the leader. Because there's one other person who could probably be a better fit for that role. You mean a man with no explanation? I, you see, you see exactly where I'm going with this, Dan. Uh -huh, and I love uh -huh, you for that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A man with no explanation. Theory, there has been a theory going around the internet, the, the Toku web, for de for over a decade now, that <laughs> Narutaki <laughs> is the actual great leader, is like a reincarnation of the great leader. If you're gonna use Shocker, if mm. you're going to, if you insist on using Shocker, which I still think is a dumb idea, but if we're gonna go with that. Make Narutaki the great leader. Additionally, this actually makes it so that we don't have the Heisei writers repeating themselves. Mm -hmm. Because decades whole gotta destroy the world to connect the world things is... It was literally copied in Zio. Like, I gotta destroy all timelines to create all yeah, timelines. Yeah, they literally copied that with Sogo, motherfucker. So, if now the whole point of Decade is, no, we, we gotta stop the great leader who is now the one who's actually trying to destroy all timelines, but not create a single world. Uh, it, it, it makes Tsukasa a little bit more of a, uh, like his whole, I'm here to destroy the world's thing, even more ironic and cocky, which, again... Takasa being cocky, good thing. We need to keep him that way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We 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 don't need to change everything about this, but we do need to make it make it make sense. Is the big goal here? Why, mm -hmm. you know, why is Sukasa such an arrogant dick? You know, if you're gonna make him that way, because it is a good characterization for him, but why? What makes him so arrogant? Man, this bring, this brings me to one other. This brings me to one other idea because when when we meet. The end, and I, I know I'm skipping a bit, but but work with me on this. The end has clearly has this attitude of he has some kind of he has some kind of history with Sukasa. He makes reference to to sea cucumbers with him, and well, it could well it could be just well it could be just him playing mind games because he because he has a thief and con man. I want I want to mind posit games or dick jokes. I want to. Well, well, it's it's Japanese humor, so it might, so the answer is probably yes. <laughs> um, but I I want to posit a I want to posit a different approach. What if um what if Suka what if um Tsukasa at some at some point in time before he ended up in in the world that Hikari's from and and lost it and lost his memories was Daiki's partner. You know, that works. Not bad. Not bad. However, let's take it a step further. What if both of them were underlings? Like, let's 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 take, you know, if you want to homage the classic Choa era mm -hmm. in any way, here's how you do it. Uh, so you make them you make them the, the new Neo Shocker, Die Shocker, Super Shocker, whatever Shocker. We're, we're going Ichigo Nigo again. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that I think that would work really well mm -hmm. in this kind of setup, and they both somehow managed to rebel in different ways. Maybe Sukasa's was a little bit further along, and that's why he didn't have all his memories. But Kaito busted at, busted both of them out, and you know took took the DN drive, took both drivers, in fact, mm -hmm. and hid the Deca driver because he wasn't sure if if Sukasa had fully converted yet. Like, he wasn't sure there was something, you know, he wasn't acting right. So he's like, I'm going to hide this over here, just be safe. So that's why Sukasa ends up coming up across it in this random place like he does at the beginning of the series. Mm -hmm. like, this also explain gives why us, he found that. Yeah. This also gives us a, a um, an even better impetus for why they were traversing the world prior to the start of things. Because this, whatever we're going to call this new Shocker organization, because the names that they have are terrible, frankly. Um, <clears throat> the uh, They were traveling the worlds to find a way to end all common Riders, so they could be the f people who rule all worlds, because that's what Shocker's whole thing was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, this, this, if they were previously lackeys, or, you know, some sort of scout... Them going through the alternate worlds all the time makes sense. 
heck, it could have been that they were they were both escaping at the same time, and there was just an accident during pursuit that caused uh, Tsukasa Tuka, to drop off and lose his memories, and then the end have to go hide everything and run and and uh, make sure the heat was gone. There is one. There is one other thing that I, that I think we need to address with this because. Um, as the as the series has gone on, we and as, in some of the follow up, we've seen that Su, see, that Sukasa can just jump can just jump between whatever world that whatever worlds that he feels like. And there's the whole thing with the um, Hikaru. St it's never really explained why the Hikari Studio is able is able to is able to jump between worlds. So going with going with going with the whole thing of um D of Daiki being a being a bit of a long term planner in this case. Even if, even if it's he's not ex he's not exactly a chess master, but he know but he knows how to think on his feet and plan for contingencies. Um, I have to I have to wonder if what if the Hikari Studio was it was one of his um, hideouts. Ooh, good idea. Well, before we go on to that, we do have to answer another question if we're going to be going down this route because mm -hmm. there is another X factor we have to keep in mind. Go on. Ejiro. Oh, yeah, Grandpa Ejiro. Yeah, Ejiro himself. Yep. Yeah, because it, the, in both circumstances, in both movies, it was at some point revealed that Ejiro Hikari was actually Dr. Shinigami, Ugh. a.k.a. Ika, De Ika David. Mm -hmm. So we have to figure out where that fits into things. Maybe. maybe my thinking is, is Kaito was work. Maybe they did something with with Ijiro, much like uh, Tsukasa, to kind of wipe his memories. Maybe Tsukasa was, or maybe Kaito was able to do something with his memories to turn him into Ijiro, mm -hmm. because you know maybe they fought him off at one point, and in doing so, he they gave they gave him a safe place, and thus maybe this was how Shocker was originally traversing the worlds before they found Tsukasa. Mm -hmm. You know, some kind of tech that they were able to create. Yeah. That way, you explain why the Hikari Studios is able to traverse the worlds, and you can use that to lead in his inevitable transfer transformation back into Doctor Shinigami. Plus, I um, I can't I can't help but I can't help but admit that I liked the I liked the transformation gag that they used for him in the in the movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> the cape. Well, both the both the cape and Ika de beer. Yeah, the pun that they make. <laughs> yeah, that, that was yeah exactly. I we, I don't want to get rid of that. I just say again, if we're gonna use it, let's explain it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And there's and um given how given how in a lot in a lot of spy fiction and and spy and adjacent fiction. You ha you have um, you have cer you have certain trigger words that are, that are um, that are implied through hypnosis. Now, whether or not you whether or not you can actually do this kind of thing is one of those things that's really up for really up for debate in when it in the scientific community. But I do th but I do think that applying that kind of thing with the memory loss is certainly possible. Oh 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 oh! Light bulb! Light bulb! What do you got? Instead of it being Kaito, what if Sh Shocker planted Ijiro as a sleeper agent? Ooh. Wanting Sukasa to complete his task without knowing he was helping them. Again, this is kind of what All Riders vs. Shy Shocker was already doing, but let's play into that a little further. Maybe they caught on to what was going on and worked Ijiro in, mm -hmm. but didn't count on Natsumi being involved. Yeah. Now, and of of course, gi of course, given given that, then you have the whole thing of is he does is he going to focus on being being a good being a good um being a good surrogate parent or or being who he was a cl yeah, a classic setup. Yeah, maybe have it like during his time as a sleeper agent. You know, he had ki you know maybe would, maybe this was something they planted long ago. Because, you know, Dr. Shinigami needed to go into hiding for some reason. Mm -hmm. Have him do that. Have him have kids and grandkids so we get to Natsumi. 
And then this, you know, shocker somehow guide like unintentionally, like indirectly guides Sukasa into Hakar into the hands of Hakari Studios, so that he, you know, knowing that he they could traverse the worlds, and so that he could they could keep tabs on him through Ezero, even if Ezero doesn't realize that's what he's doing. And thus, when you get to that revelation, and Natsumi is now involved, she kind of makes him fight between the two sides of himself. Mm -hmm. There is one other thing in, when when it comes to Sukasa that I want that I wanted to touch on. Whenever he, whenever there, whenever there's a world transfer, he te he tends to be walking out with a di with a different outfit, as if the world. And I always rationalize it that the world is trying to force some sort of sto force some sort of story on him because he doesn't fit. Remember, I can see that being the reason. The reason is very plausible. Because remember, the reason his photographs always turn always turn out blurry and shit. Is because is because of the fact that he that he do, that he doesn't fit within that world. Mm hmm. Yeah. Again, all writers kind of worked with that and actually made that a very big deal because the one world that it did show up ended up being his, and that's when everything fell to shit. Mm hmm. So again, a lot of that, you know, that's why I say I've always said, even in, even in the original series. All Riders versus versus Die Shocker to me was always the canon ending because it did it better. Yeah, that's so why I'm using that as a baseline. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Now, as for, now as far as as far as the whole thing as far as the whole thing with it with as far as the whole thing with him having a sister who happen who happens to be one of the one of the three priestesses from from Black and <laughs> their oh and yeah their BGM. And their, and their butler apparently being Shadow Moon. I'm not. I'm not doing either of those. As far as no. her, as far as her having a sister, I'm perfectly fine with that. Just not have her be a priestess. Yeah. No, at, at this no. point, that doesn't make any sense. Like, it worked in. It worked when All Riders versus that Shocker because of how they established he was actually supposed to be the great leader, so it was fitting. So having Nobuhiko and yeah Sayo be part of Shocker. And her being Bishium, that made sense. Mm -hmm. But here, that won't work. No. Now, and having Shadow Moon, I mean, okay, to be fair, this was one of the few times they actually treated Shadow Moon good. <laughs> you know? Even, even though even though they obviously gave gave his identity away, given his butler's name. Yeah, as soon as you hear the word Nobuhiko, you're like, oh, fuck, it's Shadow Moon. Not only that, Suki Kage, ha, yeah. ha. Clever. That's not even that. That true obby. You should be like neon sign or something. I know. Right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we we can get rid of we can get rid of Shadow Moon altogether. I mean, even though I do think he he was handled well there, but yeah, have Sayo just be someone that that will be the sign that Sukasa is back in his world is that he finds Sayo. But then she's like, I thought they had taken you, and that's when he starts to piece. That's, I think that will be the point where his me he triggers his memories to start coming back, and he remembers what they did to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we've we've kind of got we've kind of gotten our head of, ahead of ourselves in a bit, but when it comes to when it comes to his personality, I I um <clears throat> I think I think the fact that he that he still has some of his nature as a as a phantom th as a phantom thief which is which is also a case of on the nose by having by having his partner have the last name Kaito <laughs> but i in, i envision both when it come, as far as what as far as why both of them became became um phantom th essentially phantom thieves i um i'm not i don't want i'm not going to go with some tragedy of 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 they did it for the money or something like that. It was more of no, the no, they were they were troublemakers since they since they were kids and they just became bigger trouble. They just became bigger troublemakers and they did it for they they did it for the challenge of of it all. The reason that makes sense. The it reason, does. The reason anybody. The reason it's never it's ne also it's never been established why um why Di why Daiki was a phantom thief from the get from the get go. But I think the I think the idea of of him doing it simply because, um, because simply for the challenge of it, or someone's or someone having the notion of I have look at all this stuff I have, and and him looking at it going, 
Challenge accepted, because I'm taking that. <laughs> um, I will admit I'm channeling a bit of Rin, of Rin Setsuwa from Thunderbolt Fantasy, which more people should watch, and if, if it weren't for the fact that Crunchyroll's um, subtitling was shit, I would have suggested it for a watch party. But... Right. The thing, the thing with the thing, the thing with both, the thing with both of them is that even even if Sukasa doesn't have his memories, the instincts of the instincts of being of being a phantom thief are still present, which accounts for his arrogance and smug personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I've been able to. Yeah, anyone needs to watch Lupat just to understand exactly how cocky Phantom Thieves get. Or, you know, oh, yeah. play, play Persona Kyrie. 5. Either I, way. Which, which I've been playing Persona 5 Strikers, I can attest. Mm -hmm. Or um, or watch any storyline in Lupin the Third. Yeah. Like, there, there, there is a natural cockiness to being that kind of thief mm -hmm. in Japan, in Japanese media, that it just works too perfectly to explain why Sukasa would be an arrogant dick. No. Perfect example. I've already brought this movie up in the past. Goemon 2009. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was all done on a CG stage, but god damn did he get that that personality across. Anyway, rails. Yeah. <laughs> but and because because of, and because of that, you can you can you can easily use this to have a few to have a few gags where um where he may he may or may not have pocketed things from somebody without without thinking. Oh, accidentally pickpocketing shit! Yeah. Actually, I got a better idea because you, 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 instead of doing that, make it so that Kaito was the one that actually did the stealing. Sukasa. He was just the he was just the watch out. He's the one that made sure that nobody got in the way. You know, and ah. was he 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 was the one that would go in and shut down systems and fuck with things. Kind of one that was able to sneak in and steal shit. Would you that way? You would don't you, have to mess with much. Would you also say that he had a bit of a confidence man about him? Oh yeah. Oh. Um, which. If you need if you need a perfect example of what I mean by confidence man, go watch Great Pretender. Yeah. Someone <laughs> someone who could who, who could charm people into into di distracting them. Like he's mm -hmm. good with all of that. Yeah. While Kaito was the one that went in and did the the actual stealing. Mm -hmm. This also makes uh Tsukasa the brains of the operation and he's the one who plans out the heists. Yeah, which makes sense. <laughs> Kaito never really did come off of that way even though he's he's uh, somewhat smart himself. Thus, could have come up with a contingency plan. Maybe he picked up a few things from Sukasa, but Sukasa was the one that knew what the fuck he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, hence why he was such a cocky bastard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Natsumi Khan, we don't we don't really need to change too much with her. Um, and I'm not I'm not getting rid of the laughing pressure point gag because that was funny. <laughs> No, but if I'm going to be honest, get a different actress for her, please. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I normally don't actress. say. I don't usually call out actresses, but she was so fucking bland. Ugh. Yeah. I agree. Now that br that brings us to to the whole to the nine worlds that we that would be going with, and you know, in, instead of the this in the series, you had you had. Kind of the burgeoning of the t of the two episode arc setup that would later be perfected in double, with a lot of the with a lot of those nine worlds. First episode going into the world, second episode fixing the problem in the world. Mm -hmm. Rel relatively, um, we can't we kind of saw the burgeonings of this here, and like I, like I said, it would be used to much better effect in um, double. How however. One question that we do have to ask is: Are we still are we still doing the AR world concept, or are we or um or are we going to make a effort to to bring to bring the past in? Honestly, as much as I would have loved to try to do the actual bringing cast back, I have you, we have to accept the fact that that was never going to happen. You can no. get most of them back, but there were at least a few important ones that you were never going to be able to get. Again, Joe Degiri made it clear that he was never doing anything Common Rider related again after Kuga. 
it was impossible. And again, Hibiki also completely out. Never. Oh gonna yeah, Hitoshi. Yeah. Um, hold on. Let me let me double check his actor's name. Back up. He's do back up. He's going into Wikipedia mode. <laughs> yep. Oh. Are you oh! Is that it again? Yeah, Shigeki Hosokawa has made it abundantly clear that after his experience with Hibiki, he's had to fear for his life way too much than he normally should. Fear for his life? What the fuck? What? Have you not? Have you guys not heard about the whole ordeal with with that what that one fan that sent him death threats a couple years ago? Oh shit! No, I did no, not. No, I did him. not hear about that. Hold on. I'll, s I'll DM you guys that article real quick. Post in the council. Post in the council. Yeah. Because yeah, that's that's a big fucking. Well, that explains. It. And he was already oh, he was already pissed about the whole thing after how badly the ending of Hibiki was done. So mm -hmm. this is just that this is just like the final nail in the coffin. Yeah, he is gonna be staying far the fuck away from Common Rider after shit like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, that there's no chance you're getting everybody back. Like, the fact that they got Blade and Kiva was pretty impressive enough, but you weren't getting everybody. No. Now, when it when it comes... That brings us to the, to the next question. With a lot of the AR worlds, it was essentially trying to do remixes of the, of the previous, of the previous um, materials, concepts. Should we keep that, or should we have it that he's going into these worlds after, the, after their writer's story has um, finished? Or before, or before it, for that matter. Yes, I think that might lead to some better ideas. Because if you can't get the original writers back, you know, you could do what Geo ended up doing, really. Like, Geo actually did this right. At least getting cameos from any actors you could get back. Get, you know, you may not be able to get, you know, Joe, you may not be able to get Yusuke Godai back, but come on, let's get, uh, Let's get our officer friend back in the game, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. Um, eat Cal yeah, Kaoru Ichijo, yep. Yeah, get Ichijo back in there. Get some people from the, from the, from the, uh, from the Grongi's, uh, division back in there. Get mm -hmm. a couple of those people. Hell, get, uh, uh, Sakuraka in there. Ah, she yeah. Has some story, maybe she has some info about Kuga that he can look into and stuff like that, and then have like a rogue grungi that somehow survived everything, you know. Have you know your the uh, the one vel the one grungi come back and Gamio Zeta come in and say, okay, well, all the other grungi are dead. That leaves me as the new end, the new end. So I mm -hmm. take you know, and that's why the, everything leads to what it does. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you can do that with every world too. You know, which and given if you can. Get Given that, given that, I think I think we need to have a bit of a lightning round about how about how how we how we do the setup and follow through for for the for each of the worlds. You already you already kind of dipped into this with the first one with a with a survivor a surviving um, Grongi declaring himself the new N. Yeah, Let, let's go in the order they did. Mm -hmm. Like after this, after the next up was the world of Kiva. Now, obviously, they already got the original Kiva back in the in the actual series, so getting him... Yeah, they already got Kuji Seto to her as well. So that's so. already solved right there. You know, you, you could just do something with that. Oh. That won't be a tricky one to do at all. And you can kind of keep some of the story similar, except for the fact that this Kiva is not a freaking fan guyer. Ugh. You know, you can make it a follow-up to... This is another one where you could follow up from the end of Kiva, where, you know, he... Everything's... You know, the dark Kiva is no longer the bad guy here. You, Actually, again, this would be a perfect opportunity to do, to do the whole neo Fangire thing. Oh, yeah! That they, that they, um, that they teased at the, in the end when they went to the future, yeah. Yeah. Maybe start establishing that and then have one, fang, one old-school Fangire. Hell! Uh, did they remind me again? Did they ever kill off the Spider Fan guy? Hold on. Oh no, he's going wiki walking again. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I kind of asked this. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The Spider Fan guy? It's what you're asking? Yep. Yeah. Uh. Rio Itoya. Hmm. 
It was completely destroyed by Mio, who had fully awakened as the new queen. Oh, yeah! Mio killed him. I'm, I'm already on the Common Writer wiki. It's one of my uh, pinned tabs in my, in my uh, there you go. browser. Okay, so, so can't do that. Because so I, I, I was thinking, if we could get him back for one more round, that'd be a perfect capstone to the whole thing. <laughs> but that's obviously out. So we, again, you know, again, a lot of these are just going to be like rogues. Mm -hmm. Or, like, ones we didn't... Because you're going to keep a lot of the monsters the same. It's just how do we implement them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. Though this brings us to the next tricky one. Because next up is Ryuki. Oh, God. We're not doing you know Kamen Rider do? Trial. It, what? Actually... Give, actually, um, when it comes to... When it comes to... The, when it comes to this kind of thing... Um, instead of... Instead of utilizing the... The can the canon Ryuki ending. Why don't we Why don't we use the Ryuki ending that we did? You're gonna have mm. to set that up for anyone Which who didn't watch was, the previous episode. Yeah, I wasn't here. I wasn't here for that. Um. The 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 approach the approach that we ended up doing was that was oh, was um. I believe we had I believe we had it that oh, that Odin was the was. The tr was the true ma was the true mastermind when when it came to when it came to the world. ah you know that works you know I can see that actually happening um, yeah but 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 by the time if we by the time um by the time we get by the time we get to the world of Kiva you I would I would pr I would probably I would probably have it that um. As far as far as as far as an as far as a efficient stra straggler, there's there's a there's a couple options because the the one thing that I'm curious about is is should is whether is whether or not the uh, whether or not the abyss belt um, should be should be in this because that cause I think that... we kind of have to keep that, that yeah that's, that's, again the goal of this is whatever I want to try to limit creating too much new stuff and mm -hmm. using what we have just using it in a better way yeah so mm -hmm. as far as including abyss is concerned again we're looking at this as after the end and maybe let's let's do this because we know there were people making artificial writer belts yeah what if someone perfected that technology and actually made a full-on ryuki belt uh, ah, all like, the all the research what all the research was at a was at a university that it's fe it's fairly feasible that someone managed to hack into that and and make a backup. Yeah, to make it, it would actual be very people. easy to write yeah. that, and even though the original paperwork was destroyed, maybe some of the digital data got saved somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and yeah. the same in the same vein, since somebody was experimenting to make a fully functioning uh, Ryuki belt, there's a there's a chance they would have kept some sort of remnants of Paradoxa around. Yeah. And those so materials we... could have been stolen to create Paradoxa and Dead in, t in order to get those Abyss powers for a Common Rider Abyss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that sets everything up perfectly right there. Yeah. Uh, we, ju we, ju we would just, instead of doing the whole Common Rider trial thing, we would just have it as a st as a standard murder mystery. People di people disappearing again, who ha who happen to be around mirrors. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which Easy if we setup there. if if we can if we can get if we can get Ryuki's actor for for this, if we if we can bring uh, him back, to, yeah. yeah, if we can bring mm -hmm. him back for this, that would be a perfect opportunity for him to to show up basically at basically um, investigating the thing as a proper journalist. If we, Ooh, if we, yeah. if we can't, then I'm, and I'm willing to, I'm willing to settle with whoever we can get for, um, or a journal, and just have the gag that Sukasa's forced job is a, is a journalist. <laughs> make, <laughs> him the, make him the Peter Parker for this world of Ryuki go through. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. So that that takes care of that one. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to Blade. Now again, we actually have a very good luck on our side because we did get. Kazuma's actor back for another round. He did show up in the finale. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. knowing that, let's have this be where they. Um... Oh, okay. So let's just let's say that 
Kazuma has learned that there still actually was one more undead left, or they, maybe one of the undead was re revived. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. And obviously, because of the stalemate that him and uh, Chalice Hajime. are dealing with, Hajime are dealing with, he's worried that if anything happens, that this last undead will be the one that survive that ends up winning the, the the battle fight. And we all know what that'll lead to. So obviously, mm -hmm. they need to stop it. And that's where Sukasa and the gang come in. Yeah. Now, th one thing that we haven't touched on that I think we need to do so is throughout throughout a, throughout a lot of the encounters with with previous with previous writers and the like, Sukasa is always referred to as a devil, um, because a lot of them believe that he that he is going to, that he is going to destroy destroy the worlds. Do we keep that or do we toss that? You know what? Let's keep that, but make it something that shocker spread around. Yeah, I was going to say propaganda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zan and especially, I on the same page again. Yeah. I'd say that I'd say that works especially since um, none of the Heisei writers would know who Shocker is. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, mm -hmm. we still have we still have Mister. I have no backstory, so we have to invent one for him being the true great leader. Mm -hmm. Um. So him just being, I'm just a prophet that goes around pr pr prophesying that this man here is going to break everything. It still works, but it now works. it's, it's a form of prop now. yeah. Now it's a form of propaganda instead of just I'm the mysterious guy who says he has to die. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I, 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 I can't. <clears throat> I have no words, words for him. You. I have no <laughs> words for him. The words Man, are. We're we feel you. I feel you so hard right now. <laughs> anyway. Phrasing shades. <laughs> Phrasing boom, both berries out. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to Fies. Ah, uh, Fies is so good. I love Fies. Now, I don't want to do the. I don't want to do the. I'm not entirely sure about doing the whole smart brain academy thing. Oh, no, smart you're brain fucking not doing school. that. No, fuck that fuck noise. That. Fuck that noise. No. Now, here's where we have something that almost seems like a problem, but it actually works in our favor. Because at this point, Takumi is pretty much on the verge of... has pretty much died by this point. Because at the end of the series, he was pretty much dying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, we actually have a lucky break because the Orphanox weren't all dead yet. Oh, so, yeah! This is so absolutely can, true. So we could easily say that there are still Orphanox in there for them to deal with. And thus, this and because this is the episode where Kaito first shows up, you know, maybe there's oh, some smart brain first. technology that he wants to steal. And they run into each other and Kaito, you know, he in his cocky way, he's like, "Oh, so there's where you've been Here's where you've been hiding." Mm -hmm. Not knowing that Kaito that Sugasa has been traveling the worlds. Or no, he realizes, "Wait, you're not supposed to be here." Uh oh, <laughs> that's why he starts acting cocky with the guy. Mm -hmm. So something I do have to bring up uh, regarding Fies because we are we are using the original Fies timeline now at this point instead of the mm -hmm. AR. Um, was that the D video special for Common Rider Four? Oh yeah, Yango. Yeah, did did say that Takumi did die. And then yeah. they say that maybe the fact that he came back was the history modifying machine. I don't like either yeah. of these things. I say we just blow them up. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck do you think I was doing? Mm -hmm. Good. Because <laughs> I was Takumi. That, that Takumi was officially dead by this point. We were not acknowledging that fucking yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Takumi <laughs> deserves life. The man is precious. I will protect him to the end of days. <laughs> so yeah. What are they gonna do about Mari and Kitaro? Um. Since they didn't really explain what happened to them in the Yango movie, we'll just say they moved. We'll just say they moved on. Mm -hmm. You know, they everything was you know. In fact, that they're only gonna be the ones that are still gonna be in the, the, this episode. We get Mari and Kitaro back for this. Mm -hmm. It would be yeah. it would be funny as it would be funny as hell if if. If one if one of them ended up ended up making the ended up um 
and up running the la the laundry service that Takumi wanted to do. <laughs> You're a white that laundry. Way. Well, that's what K Keitaro was doing in the first place. Maybe he finally m manned up and actually started running the shop properly. Mm -hmm. And Mari could have actually gone on and became a, a, a stylist like she ever always planned. Mm -hmm. You know, like just play into that and just have the, the, the Orthodox getting, you know, trying to cause trouble. And again, so we got... That one's actually really easy to set up, honestly, when you really think about it. The only downside... And, but, and you know, and, but... We can find at least one... Uh, there's probably at least a few enough surviving people. Hell, guy who did uh, Saiga. Mm -hmm. Or not Saiga. Hey, uh, Leo! Delta. Delta. Or no, oh, no, um... Hmm, I'm trying to remember his name. Yeah. No, no, yeah. No, Delta was someone entirely, someone entirely different. You know, we know who we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Have, have it so that he, because we're gonna have to bring at least, if we're gonna bring anybody back, we bring him back. If you mm -hmm. can't get Mari and Kato, get him back because what we can do is have him be Fives. Because one of the other aspects we forgot about is one of Sukasa's abilities, the final form rides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is already going to be a problem enough with Kuga, since obviously we won't have Kuga to play with there. But we can find some way to get him. You know, if, if anything else, we can just have a suit actor for that. You know, mm -hmm. even if we can't get Joe to Gary back, get the suit actor back, that we can work around that. Yeah. Everything else, right. though, we can find ways to bring the actual writers in so they can do the final form rides because you kind of need those. Mm -hmm. Some final form rides are just. Yeah, we're we're also, and we're gonna we're, we we would fix a lot of them. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Also, shades. The, the guy you're thinking of is Shuji. Is uh, Shuji? Shuji. Yeah. Or Delta. Yeah. That's yeah. At least you know. Again, have somebody. Yeah, have that and be, have them find the Fize gear and use it. Mm -hmm. Easy fix there. Now then. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was about to move on, but if you got something else you want to bring up, I'll um, let you. I don't want to. And as far as far as the as far as the as far as the um, tech that Ka that Kaito was looking for, there's there's two there's two things I'm there's two things I'm considering. Either a he fa he found let he found a he found quote unquote the emperor's belt. Whether whether that be whether that be Saiga Orga or it does or it doesn't ma it doesn't matter he just found it and and has something in mind for it, or he j or he just w or he just want or he just wants it because it because it's valuable. Well, why not? So while we are keeping everything from the original Fies world, why not just make Daiki's treasures the the treasures he was going for in the AR? He went for the Fies belt, but then had to give it up for the Orga belt. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he's the one that you know. He's like, oh, you look, you know. He finds the Fives belt and gives it to Chuji. It's like you look like you need this more than I do. Here, tosses it to him. Because mm -hmm. that would that is something Kaito does a lot. Is he realizes is. He, he, he gives up the treasures because they are needed more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eagle origami, so anyone? <laughs> yeah. No, we we again, like I said, the Shinkenger cross up across the the Shinkenger side of things was better. Let's just not for, let's just not remember him. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we'll get to uh, that. We'll get to that. Uh, so now that that's established, let's move on to our next one. We've got Agito up next. Oh boy. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Pretty tricky. This one. This one is. This one is definitely tr definitely tricky. Simply be simply because of the way it's set up. Um. Now, mm -hmm. given now, there is there is a chance that we could that we could get the a actor back because we got him back for Zio. Oh yeah, it's for Shikikashu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we got a lot of actors back for Zio that we would have never gotten back in the past. I'm not. I, I don't want to hold my breath that we could actually pull it off here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Anyway, you guys, the thing that actually, I, no, wait, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait! They did get him back in decade because he was in all writers. Oh yeah, that's right. So problem solved. All right. <laughs> anyway, you guys, the thing I'm gonna head out because I'm, I'm being, I'm attending something else. So. All right, later, Thanks, later. See you guys. All right. Um, we when it comes to when it comes to him, I do I do think that he's still, um, maintaining his restaurant that he named Agito. Oh yeah. Um. 
now as far but I but I would but as far as the straggler I would I would go I would go with the notion that even 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 eh, cuz cuz when you think about it the the overlord was never truly beaten he wasn't he wasn't killed or destroyed he simp he simply gave up and and said that he would be keeping a watch but that doesn't mean that his but his right but keep in mind that his rival still had that little plan still had that little plan that screwed him over when they fought all those years ago where he he te where the over the overlord of light technically lost but he but he but he planted he, he planted his power within humanity the approach that the approach that I want to that I want to go with is is uh, the Agito restaurant is is a has a double purpose. On one hand, he gets to pursue his dream of cooking. On the other hand, he's able to keep a close eye, he's able to keep a close eye on the area just in case somebody starts exhibiting signs of of becoming another Agito. Not the another Agito that we know, but ju but just some, but just the seed actually actually bearing fruit. Not the another Agito that we know. Hmm. You mean yeah. the one from Go that was not very well thought out? <sighs> no, I'm. I mean the I mean the ideas of the of the seed of Agito awakening in some in someone else. Yes, I I I, remember, I know exactly what you're referring to. I was just. You were being making you. Making it. Uh, I was <laughs> yes. I was being me. I was just, you know, lamenting the fact that there are things that could be better. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is how we can get the Buffalo Lord, the Taurus Ballista, involved in all of this. Maybe there is still one of those lords left that yeah. we could pull out. He 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 catches he catches wind of an, of another awakening, and hit, and because of the the lords essentially are angels. And because because of that, they, it's it's not even it's not even a question of whether of whether or not they'll they'll um tr they'll try and hunt down they'll try and hunt down someone who has the seed. They are compelled to. They don't have a choice. Yeah. So and, honestly, pretty easy setup there. Um, I do given the, given that I do think I do think that so I do think that Saul is is um. Is still is still some is still somewhat operational. It's just a it's just a skeleton. Simply simply because of the fact that with less with less lords showing up, there's not enough re there's not as much of a reason to have that much staff on hand. It's more it's more of a reserve unit at this point. Yeah, and so it's easy to set that up. Now, considering we don't have Yusuke and Adara involved anymore since we have obviously removed him from the from this particular setup mm -hmm. we might have to introduce somebody else to take over as g3x because odds are good we're not getting that many of the, the old crew back mm -hmm. we, we ha we'll have to see how that plays out um yeah actually how, how about this when it comes when it comes they um after after the downsizing of Saul, they they were they started they they had to start doing op open um open submissions for who since the since the guy who was the role of G three that was basically a temp job for him. But for but they need but they needed so they so G three X needed a new pilot, and they have been they have been trying with several candidates. Most of them can't. Most of them have been able to maintain the strain of of being in of being in the suit. Because well, any as anybody who's worn armor know, knows that stuff knows that stuff's heavy and yeah, even even more so with the when it was when even in the series it was made clear that the G three X suit is very demanding. In fact, that was the, that was the whole problem. The suit was too perfect. Um. So, the, but the approach the approach that I wanted to go with is that who, is that they do find a candidate. It's not Sukasa, but 
it just happens to be somebody who is our is our get is our guest character for the for the episode. But he en- but he ends up being able he ends up being able to to utilize the suit very well. And when the Buffalo Lord shows up, he starts doing too well. And that's and that's when th- that's when things start getting a little bit suspicious. Uh, I see what you're getting at now. Yeah. Um and you can kind of have it at the end of the at the end of one, at the end of one of the episodes that he's he's he start he um he's compl- he's complaining of he's complaining about the heat for some reason and fe- and and um he- heading to the infirmary because he thinks he has a fever and that and that's when he transforms and to be quite honest when it comes to this I'm debating whether or not the transformation should look more like Agito or Gills. Well, considering mm. how the Gill suit's been treated over the years, I don't think that'd be a good choice. Yeah. Oh. So you're, you're, think, you're thinking that it looks like Agito ground form? Maybe, yeah. Maybe maybe find a way... Well, the problem is, is we're going to have Agito... Since Shuichi's still around, mm-hmm. we're going to need him to be Agito. Maybe have him be another Agito. I'm, per- I'm perfectly fine with that. The whole, the whole, pur- the whole purpose when it comes to this is, is the, f- is the fact that a nu- is the fact that another seed has actually has been found. Yeah, and and it would make more sense for him to be an Abra Agito. Be honest, it mm-hmm. wouldn't make sense for him to be a full Agito, all things considered. Yeah. Um. The th- one of the th- one of the things that I ca- one of the things that I kind of want to do with this per- with this particular motif is. Is is the whole is the whole ev- is a evolution versus stagnancy? Since the Overlord's whole thing was that he wanted humans to remain as they were, he didn't want them to change, and yet change is inevitable. Yeah. But ulti- ultimately, ultimately, I'd I'd say that would be the, that would be the approach that I'd go with. Um, uh, that we should go with Agito. Um. And I think I think I think I think it's a suitable setup. Plus, if we if there's anything that should be done, the fu- the climactic battle in that arc needs to have believe yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Especially that, that given how many mark out moments there were when that when that song played um, during the Agito arc in Geo. Yeah. Uh, but then, if there was any arc we're going to have the most trouble with, it's probably going to be this next one. Oh! Ore! Sanjo! Oh! Oh, dear merciful Buddha. <laughs> it's Buddhas time are not to merciful. talk about Neno! Oh, Lana, I must. I oh, must. Yeah, none of us really want to do it because there's there's I really would. no easy way to do this. No easy way, and plus, even by this point, Deno was kind of getting overexposed. I mean, can we just can we just not and say we didn't? No, we got <laughs> we've gotta. Uh, and for a penny, and for a pound. Mm-hmm. I now, mean. Fortun- fortunately, we d- fortunately when it comes to ha- when it comes to having a Imagin in this, that's going to be the easy part because even we even can make when our Kai, own. even when Kai w- even when Kai was beaten, that didn't mean that the Imagi um just stopped. Yeah, the Imagin yeah. are always going to exist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To be fair, aside from the fact that this was supposed to tie into the Cho Deno movie, which we are axing that right now. Like, yeah. We're blowing that up. Mm-hmm. Well, then if we're going to axe the Chodeno movie, we can just make this about Tsukasa accidentally stopping in the Deno world and getting an imagine of his own. And then De- have to get Deno to help him with it. Uh-oh. Reluctantly, of course, because it's, um, it's, it's the Deno imagine. You know I'm... it's not going to end well. I have. There is one particular idea I have for maximum ridiculousness. 
Momotaros gets inside uh, Tsukasa? No. I'm thinking. Right, I'm thinking. So, I'm thinking something even. I'm thinking something even worse. Oh God. Oh, See. Oh, He ends. He ends up having to deal with Sieg and have and has and has a moment of dear God. It's strange seeing this from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> you evil son of a bitch! I like it. What better? What Here better way? To another. <laughs> what better way to to con to contrast a douchebag than an even bigger douchebag? And I got that anatomy thing when they from the show with weird. Like I, uh, like I, like I said, monk. I like this idea. Another. <laughs> Stop breaking my steins. I'm not breaking anything. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Completely. I I built this cup out of nano machines so I can throw it down and shatter it and then have it reform on my on my table. Remember, Zadari Corp has your back. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> This is the part where you and say this, that. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why Monk ref continually refers to him as the bane of his fucking existence. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the 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 approach that the approach that I that I am having is because even though even though Sieg was dropped off in the past, he's he's technically he's technically still able to go to go around to um to go around just through normal time. And. There doesn't seem to be an aging thing when it comes to Imagine because they because they because they technically don't ha don't have bodies in that same sense. Um, so he so you could easily you could easily have it that Sieg ends up possessing ends up possessing Sukasa, and that through a series of very very unfortunate events for Sukasa. Yeah. And that that ends up that ends up lead that ends up lead. And of course, if Sieg still if Sieg ends up showing up, then the tar then the Taros are gonna ca are gonna catch wind of it in one form in one form or another, and there, and um, well, Mo Momo's probably gonna want to fight him, because <laughs> it's Mo fucking Momo. And, and then Tsukasa's gonna be like, why should I even do that? Tsukasa mm -hmm. Tsukasa's gonna find that a big waste of time. Yeah. But. But I, but you could, you could have. But as far as, as when, like, there is the possibility to either reuse a previous, reuse a previous Imagine costume, or, or um, bring up one of our own that C that Sieg has been in hiding from, and he j and Sukasa just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I think well, it should again, be a unique the, costume. Again, the, the 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 best part is is that. The, the original show's lineup already provides us that we have the alligator emoji, mm -hmm. so we can just use that. Yeah, i i actually I actually think that because Sieg is a <laughs> is um you know combining with someone that that well because <laughs> he's combining with Tsukasa, I think the form should be a little different. Oh, of course, of course. I, I would say add some pink to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Magenta. Magenta, whatever. Pink! <laughs> <laughs> so, that's easy enough. Mm -hmm. Um, and Then we so, move on... Wh Sorry, one last just... note I do I do want to make about World of Deno. Um, as as everyone else can probably already see, we've, we've set this up to be pretty uh pretty humorous and i think that 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 set of episodes the 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 beginning and end should be a non-stop laugh i'm sorry it should be and it should almost all of it needs to be at Tsukasa's expense here we yeah. have mr smug debonair fuck you uh, i'm the guy who thought up all the plans and i'm the guy with all the plans and all the plans are fucked so, <laughs> what yeah. did the planner do when all the plans are fucked? This is what this is when you find out. Mm. Yeah, th that you need to have that one episode that kind of knocks them down a peg. It also makes everyone else laugh their asses off. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that that makes perfect sense. That brings so we go from the super comedic to the super fucking serious as we get to Kabuto. Yeah, mm, my um, heart hurts now. 
Why'd you do that? The whole now the whole idea of of the AR Kabuto being permanently stuck in clock up, I'm not I'm not really interested in doing. No. Uh, we're not fucking doing that. If Again, we, don't we're not we're, do not compare we're not any of the uh, the AR worlds that we saw, the stories that they had, fuck that nuking that shit. Yeah. We are nuking it. Yeah, this, so this is after the end of, of Kabuto. I'm going to make one exception, though. I'm going to make one exception here very soon, but you'll see what I mean. Um, I'm still going with the idea that um, that Sho that Shoji Tendo is it is currently studying cooking in France. Yeah, actually, this is where G. I think we should take an element from Gio. Mm -hmm. Let Let's do something that Gio did. Let's Let's give it to Gatak. Yeah, so, give, and I'd I'd say I'd say when it comes I'd I'd say we could pr we could probably we could probably take chunks of the Kabut of the Kabuto arc from Geo wholesale and put it here and we wouldn't have any problems since the whole yeah. thing is G is is um is Gatak finally finally get finally getting his uh, finally getting his recognition after being the butt monkey and the second fiddle for most of his run. Yeah. Give it to Kagami. That that and, just makes too much sense. And because this was a world where initially Daiki was getting the clock up system, and Daiki is also the secondary writer, there there could be a little interplay between Daiki and, and Gatak. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Mm hmm You know. You, you, be, they're, they're both they're both the second fiddles, and this is their time to shine. Yeah, give it a Makes little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually like that. Yeah, so that was actually really easy to set up. That one's actually pretty such cut and dry. Yeah, as is our next world, Hibiki. Oh. As I said, as we've already mentioned, Shigeki Hosokawa wasn't coming back. However, this is the one time Decade actually got it right. Mm -hmm. Because this is the one time they did get an original actor back in a sense. By getting back a Sumu. Who was the next Hibiki anyway, technically. Exactly. He was, that's, what he so... was, that's what he was supposed that's what he was supposed to be. And I pro as as funny as the as funny as the whole three schools the whole um the whole two schools thing where the where the wind oni are Tai Chi and the lightning oni are um ju are judo. Um I don't. I don't want to do that. Plus, I don't want another instance of when it came. When it came to Todoroki's actor, there was that period a few years where I just couldn't get away from him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the the approach that, I, and to be honest, Zan Zanki's um per, Zan Zanki's partic sorry not why was I saying Todoroki Zanki's particular act particular actor. Um, and his and his particular character, he's more or less a retired. He was more or less a retired oni by the end of Hibiki. He had passed on the duty over to his student Todoroki. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And I'd pr I would pr I would pr and um. I would probably ha I would probably have it that um. That. Just because, just because, just because the whole Orochi thing came and went, which was, which um, is its own issues. But I'm getting ahead of myself. That doesn't that doesn't mean that the duties of the Oni stop, and subsequently the duties of Takashi stop. Those two, those two, those two are still those two are still active, and they're still Oni in various territories all all over Japan. Course. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry, you can love it or hate it, but I think you have to keep that giant crab battle. I'm not. Oh. I'm not disputing that. <laughs> that was How, too glorious to leave out. However, I'm not having Narutaki being the thing that summons it and then taunts. No, oh, it just that no. no, it just shows up. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just another Magamo that just shows up. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're we're keep we're doing that, but we are keeping the giant crap battle because yeah. that scene with all of them rocking out that's just too perfect mm -hmm. uh, i mean yeah <laughs> but like you said since this is after the end of the show and pbk did call 
Asumu by his name before passing on the Hibiki title to him. Mm -hmm. uh, it's perfect that we do have the new Asumu uh, as Hibiki in World of Hibiki for this decade rebuild. Yeah, and maybe you could even have another like big everyone rocking out battle. Um. In a, in, in, it's, it's not going to be exactly the same because we are dealing with the original world of Hibiki, but maybe we could include more people instead of just the cast we got. Actually, I was thinking the same thing because considering what else was going on at this time, there's another actor we could tap. Who? Uh, how about Yuichi Nakamura? <laughs> yeah, Zan knows where I'm going with this. I like where this is going. Because he's already being involved in some capacity, since we're obviously going to have probably have him involved in the Deno world anyway, since he's also, you know, Zeronos. Mm -hmm. So have him show up here and reprise his role as Kiyosuke, a.k.a. Kamen Rider Kiyoki. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Have him and you know, and have the arc be him and Insumu working together, considering they were rivals throughout most of the end of the, the second half of Hideki. Have them put, you know, finally end that rivalry and have them actually be brothers in arms. I'm um, yeah. I um. Should would you have would you have would you have Kiyosuke as some as somebody who 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 still has the mindset of he has to he has to go about it by him by himself until he gets reality smacked in front of him. You know what? That probably would be a good idea. Um, that that would... might be part of part of the the uh, a good um, arc for being in World of Hibiki. Yeah, it's helping helping Asumu and Kyosuke, or helping Kyosuke to realize that he does need the help of the other Oni mm -hmm. to to take down some of these threats, and having Asumu being Asumu going, "Come on, man!" and and extending his hand because yeah. Asumu, mm -hmm. come on now. <laughs> um, I had thought I had thought something I had thought about is having scenes where where Kiyosuke is trying to trying trying to master trying to master Kurenai, but he can't, but for whatever reason he can't do it. Okay. Yeah, I think we can do that, but instead have it be the re you know the fact that he ends up not he ends up realizing he doesn't need it because if he works with everybody else, they have the the combined powers enough to do, to surpass Kuranai. Yeah, of course you could also have a gag that you can't use Kuranai; it's not summer. <laughs> yeah. Make sure it's the winter just for that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, so that that ends up taking care of the major the early worlds. Mm -hmm. That that's the end of the nine worlds arc right there. Yeah. And honestly, the majority of the world of negatives where we meet the dark riders, we'll make some minor changes, but the majority of that story is pretty spot on. Yeah, most of it's most of it's pretty good, um, simply because the world of negatives is isn't tied to one world and all we need to do is touch it up so we are still using original writers from those worlds rather than ar writers mm -hmm. yeah if if you know if we if there are equivalents of them you know mm -hmm. obviously it depends on who we can get back and and, and if, if not you know what don't have actual people just have dark writers Suits. show up yep suit just actors suits. yeah do you think really that... the ultimate sorry go ahead do you think that the that the world of negatives would be an would be a ideal spot to kind of drop hints of, about um about Shocker? Oh, absolutely! Like that's where you have to start really bringing that in, in into the fold because up until now, you know, we can drop little subtle clue like super subtle clues throughout the the nine worlds arcs, but here's where we start dropping the bigger clues. Here's where we stop being as subtle about it. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to outright state it, but we have we, we have to start really opening up, you know, the possibility that there's something else going on. Because 
It was around this time Sharker started becoming a thing for not long after. I, like, after this, I think it was like, a, what, World of Black RX where Sharker started finally showing their faces? Yeah, the main agent being Apollo Geist. So yeah, we, we can start dropping hints here, or dropping the big hints here, and maybe in the next world or two, we can actually have them start appearing. Like, maybe not to the heroes themselves, but maybe just start, like, at the end of uh, the Shinkenja arc, they finally actually make their first appearance and setting up the plans for the Black RX world. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So, we don't really have to do much with that outside of that. You know, at, at this point, you know, Sukasa gets complete form and everything else plays out pretty much as it did, aside from the fact that, yeah, change the suits is change it to all suits, no actors, because that doesn't make any sense, especially with how we're doing things. Oh, um, yeah. I one question that I do that I do want to ask is when it comes to when it comes to the way complete form work, when it comes to the way complete form works, um, would we keep would we keep it as is or would or would we tweak it? Because I'm honestly, inst I'm I'm more I am more of the I am more of the mindset of of ha instead of, instead of having him do these duplicates, um, just do just have him have him access those forms as if the, as if they were regular form rides. Mm, maybe, because yeah, Kaito was the one that actually summoned riders. Sukasa became the rider. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah, it wouldn't hurt to keep that aspect going. Uh, although I do have to say, um, th that aspect it, also keeping it separated between main riders and side riders because the activation codes for for both of the K touches was different. Yeah, due to the types of riders they were both following. Mm -hmm. Um. I think that whole motif works. I think I think it checks out. Yeah. What tweak did you have in mind, if any, Monk? The main the main tweak that I had is I I wanted to do with I wanted to do a thing early on where there were cer where there were certain form ride cards that Sukasa tried to use but they didn't work. Like he tr like say say for instance he when ge after getting the um after getting the de after getting the Deno um. Mm -hmm. um, cards. He tr he tries he tries using climax or liner form, and it and it doesn't work. Not having it work with climax form would actually make sense, since climax form was Deno's full was is, is the equivalent to the complete form. Um, the point the point is is that some sort of up, some sort of up, some sort of upgraded form besides the besides the base side grades. He tr Tsukasa tries to use at least once. It doesn't work. When when once he gets complete, those forms that he tried to use, he now can. I think that works, so long as it's not because he's in complete form they work, but because he has the K touch they work. Yeah, like he needs the K touch for it all to to scan in and properly work on the belt, and then in complete form he just does the, all the quick switching and everything else he does. All uh, with a uh, and the you know spamming final form rides. Oh, um, fucking Christ! <laughs> no, it, no, I would, I would just, I would just go with the with the idea of 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 um complete form. Just, instead, instead of doing the whole card flipping when, whenever one of those is accessed, um, yeah, just that. Just have it that he's that he's switching that he's switching from complete to say Agito shining in in one case. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um. I, I get where I get where he's coming from on this. I, I, I do too. Yeah. Now, now to address a a, a rather small dromedary in the room. Um, how are we going to handle World of the End? Since we've now determined that both uh, Tsukasa and Daiki have been working together. Have they been working together for a long time and actually came from the same world? Or is World of DN still going to be the world that Daiki came from and they've been traveling since well before Shocker ever touched them? Hmm. There's there's two there's two ways to go about it because 
I do I do like the Im I do like the imagery of a of a brainwashed community on that on that front and the f and the fact that um the fact that Gl the fact that Glive really r really w even a even after 14 was taken out um was d was d was not suddenly fixed no he no he turned evil voluntarily which would be nice if it actually yeah, if it actually went anywhere but obviously you couldn't I th so I'm thinking of killing two stones with one bird because we've already dropped we've already dropped hints that about the presence of shocker by this point I would go with that this this is the, this is where we t this is where we take the whole no the whole notion of of their of their of their um wor of the world where where um where Decade came from, the world where Daiki came from, and we combine them. This is both. This is both of their worlds. It's just that one of them knows it, and the other one doesn't. There is one issue with that, mainly is that that, that this. Then, if we're gonna do that, then we also have to make this the introduction of Shocker completely. We have to give. Because if if the main goal up until this point was just for Sukasa to find his own world, mm -hmm. he didn't know about anything else. He doesn't even know Shocker's a thing. So if if he ends up in this world, he's going to want to stay. We have to give him a reason to want to leave. So we would have to introduce Shocker in some capacity, and maybe he's you know he's the one that they're they're the ones that brainwashed this world after they left because it would make sense given what we know. You know, how about how about can't... this? Okay. We we are um there was already the whole there was already the whole thing with Nobuhiko in in the All Riders versus Die Shocker movie. Yeah, but that was World of Decade rather than World of the End. I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. They still ha they still have access to Nobuhiko and he has been he has been their trump card. You know, util util because utilizing the d utilizing the data from the fights that have gone that have gone on up until this point, and he's the he's the one who shows up and ki and kicks decades ass. Basically, basically as the as Shocker's personal agent. Hmm, that might work, and we could actually at least you know I I would say don't finish him off here. Because mm -hmm. we can save him for a couple episodes later. Yeah. The approach, the approach that I'm going with is: decade gets his ass kicked and has to re has to retreat. And now he's aware that Shocker's a thing, so he now has his goal: stop Shocker, mm -hmm. so that he can go home. And when it comes, the the thing that I'll even further tie this in with, as I mentioned, Daiki's bro Daiki's brother turned evil of his own volition. He wasn't brainwashed. What if the what if the what if the whole thing with um with fourteen was was a was a was a distraction? I.e. they i.e. fourteen was the fourteen was certainly the means to, was certainly a means to do this whole this whole control experiment, but it was also a means to keep attention away from who was truly running things, and that's who that's who Daiki's brother paid paid his actual loyalties to. And mm. give, given the given the given the fact that we've already hinted that Daiki himself has history with sh with Shocker, given what ha given what happened, I think that would make the blow even worse. We can work. Yeah, I think we can work with that. You know, it's it's a cl it's a classic pull the rug out from under you because you think you think. You think that hey we hey we do, hey we beat fourteen all these people should come back and he should be able to get he should be able to see his brother again, as he used to be. Nope. And um the, and of course then and of course then things go to shit. Although I do I have no intention of having of of having the kid be, um, Shadow Moon. In fact, we don't even know who who's behind the Shadow Moon mask. It may it it may be Nobuhiko. It may be it may be somebody else entirely. They may have take 
They may have taken these. They may have taken the stone and get and given it to someone else. Which will actually line up really well with how we can adjust a certain other arc coming up. Mm -hmm. Like I would, I would, and keep keep in mind, Sukasa isn't going to know who Shadow Moon is, obviously. Yeah. And. What is it? Are is it arguably too early to have to have him get his ass kicked with with um complete form? Possi possibly, but this is a this is a case where I I need to I need to cut off one of my own arms to cut to work out of the corner that we've that they kind of walked into, and this is the best yeah. way for me to do it. Actually, um, here's what we do. He doesn't use complete form against the fight because we're gonna keep the fight with fourteen as a separate thing. That's gonna be the main fight of the arc. Yeah. Have. Shadow Moon, or actually have him to have the thing with with fourteen and do, and Jasheen fourteen, mm -hmm. and then as soon as they're done, worn out, big fight because good God, then Shadow Moon shows up and kicks their ass. They're already gonna be worn down, so even complete form wouldn't be enough to stop something as powerful as Shadow Moon. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, he can't he can't maintain complete form because he's so tired. Yeah. Yeah. So give, that way, it's not nerfing it. It's showing that you know you can. They just went through help. something big, and now some th something bigger is coming out to say, ha, 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 "Fools, you thought it was over. It's boss fight phase two, and you didn't save any of your items." Exactly. That that actually works better, and it avoids the problem of nerfing a final form too soon. Yeah. Now. When it com now, when it comes to now, that now what? Given that, what's next when it comes to the world list? Shinkenger. Oh boy! Oh it's yeah! Time for Shinkenger. I I would I would say, okay. Given that, I'd say that the setup that we can have is, um, when it comes to when it comes to the world jump, because of how because of how distressed they are, it's more a case of I don't care what world we end up going to, just get us out of here. Yeah. That, and that's... that way we have an explanation for how they would end up in such a strange place. Mm -hmm. Where am I? What is this place? Why has no one ever heard of common Riders? What the hell? Yeah. And of course, you know, Daiki's going to be like, there's a treasure here. I know there is. We got to yeah. find it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, as, as silly as some of it is, I don't think there's really much we could change about the Shinkenger arc. Although one it, one question that I do that I do want to have, at this point, would you have it that Daiki is a fish is essentially a member of the party instead instead of instead of a um instead of a annoyance? I think considering at this point we would have already had uh, Sukasa get his memories back because even just being there and seeing everything mm -hmm. would have triggered that. Yeah, I think at this point he would be a full member of the team, and probably piss off everyone. Well, especially because Daiki would probably be like, finally, to, to, to Tsukasa, be like, dude, you have no idea. These treasures, they've been, oh, you, without you, getting these treasures has been like at least three times as hard. <laughs> Why did it take you so long? What the but, hell, man? <laughs> but because of the journey tsukasa has been on, he still remembers all that. Like those memories haven't gone away, so he won't be the same. And that's going to drive actually. That that might even kind of cause the cause Kaito to get a little uh, unnerved. Well, I mean, not only that, but it, you know, he's not. I'm guessing prior. You know, we we have set them up as phantom thieves. Prior, Kukasa probably wouldn't have cared as much about helping the people that he's had help helping around him and being attached to people because it was just him and and Daiki going around, you know, stealing shit for the fun of it, seeing how well they could get away with it, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and now Tukasa does care a little bit about people and the worlds he's been in and now has a goal to finally get back to where he belongs to and to get, to get that all done, he has to beat down Shocker. Um, yeah, Daiki's going to be like, dude, let's just go steal some more stuff. Why do we got to hang around here anymore? We can just keep going around. He's like, bruh, I just want to get home. Can we yeah. just get home first? 
Mm. I haven't. I, I just got home, just started remembering home, and then those assholes showed up. Can we get home first? Might cause a little little bit of friction between Daiki and Takasa. Um, and, he, and and then Kaito can run off, try to steal from Genta like he does in the orig- in the original. Yeah, and sets that whole thing up. Jesus. And then have you know Narutaki mm. still doing his whole propaganda thing. Sets all that up. So we put everything in place to have the episode go relatively the same as it originally did. But now it has context that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Exactly. (laughs) And that changes literally everything. But the episode's exactly the same. But the stakes are different, and the motives are different, and the actual people are all different. So, uh, no, it's not the same. It is, in fact, very different, even if it looks the same. Mm-hmm. That's the beauty of what we're doing. Again, you don't have to completely nuke everything. We're just giving everything context to make it make sense. With little tweaks here along the way that all start to come together to form a bigger picture. Yeah, that's how these always. That's how these always turn out. Uh, I think we commented on it on one of our previous reconstructions. We're all, we always say, like, right at the beginning, we're going to nuke big parts, and then we never do because all of the small changes snowball. I think I think the I think a better phrase in that regard is prep the nukes just in case because yes. yeah, there's going to be some stuff getting nuked. That's uh, that's inevitable. It's just the it's just the extent. We don't go full exterminatus. We we're we're not we're not Ellen Rid- we're we're not Ellen Ridley yet right right Ellen Ridley right yet <laughs> bleh, bleh. we're not nuking it from orbit just to be sh- the only way to be sure quite yet mm-hmm. yeah but uh and then of course you know this is gonna be yet another set of comedy episodes which we're going to need after all of the reveals in World of the End of how serious we just made it. Even more serious cool than it off. already was. You need we a cool need, off period. Yeah, we need that period for everybody's emotions to stabilize. They get a little bit of comedy, a little bit of misunderstanding, and eventually, in the end, everybody's friends. And then we go back, and we hit the world of Black RX. Mm-hmm. The, the worlds of Black and Black RX. That that arc. Yes. Now, the I, only one of the only times you can justify having both black and black RX in the same room because it's two different worlds. Damn it, Yonamara! I mean, that really shouldn't be a thing. The world of black RX should just include all of black as well, since well, obvious reasons are obvious. Yeah. Again, if you're gonna, you know, it's, it's if even Deshinta has pointed this out. If you have to have black and black RX. Just make black a lower tiered power form. Mm-hmm. Have them change between the two. It's not yeah. that hard. Yeah, it, it should all just be World of Black or X, and it, it should be one guy, one form. It just now, changes between forms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, getting back on trails here, we have now because of what we've done with the World of the End, we have now just perfectly set this world up. Because, because now I do have to ask the question: Are we still going to have it that he that Sukasa is being confused with Joe the Hayes? I think we can make a joke on that. I don't think that's going to hurt anything. Mm-hmm. I got to get going. I'm, I'm starting to fade. Right. Have a good night, Kira. Stay frosty. <laughs> but yeah, no, we we can have that little in, that little joke going. But the real story of this arc has to be Shadow Moon. Mm-hmm. We've now established him. He's now a part of this. And because we're not actually using Nobuhiko as Shadow Moon, we can make it that when Kotaro sees Shadow Moon and realizes it's not Nobuhiko, he gets pissed. Yeah, he flips because, the fuck out. Because, yeah, for two reasons. One, it's Shadow Moon. It's his most dangerous foe, considering it was his brother back in the day. But because but because of the fact it's not now, he is di- they are dishonoring and put and just shaming the legacy of his brother when he died back in Black RX, and that's Which gonna is- send him over the deep end. Oh yeah, and uh, that's also like 
Tsukasa and Daiki are going to be like, what the fuck, as Black RX tears Shadow Moon a new asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Doesn't I'd... destroy him, but he gets him so be- beaten down that he runs off. And that's when Kotaro can explain to them the history of Shadow Because this is the one thing they never did. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they, 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 only in some of the later spring movies did they even mention the fact that they were supposed to be brothers. No, we're going to make that a big fucking deal here yeah. because... That scene, even Black RX, as dumb as that series could be at times, and let's be honest, Black RX could be really fucking dumb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that moment where Nobuhiko gains and regains enough of his humanity to sacrifice himself at the end, you cannot dishonor that legacy. If you're going to re- if you're going to bring Black RX and Shadow Moon into the story, you have to retain and honor that legacy. And this would be the best way to do it by making them pissed that they would dishonor him like that. There's yep. al- there's also the fact that it's a that it's a remind that um the mere appearance of an of someone else um having having the having the having the um Shadow Moon Kingstone is is a is for him a reminder of everything. That was t- that was taken from him from go- from Golgam and that and then from Crisis. Yep. Yeah. It's all go- it's all going to pile on him. It's mm-hmm. it, it, like the entire reason he's going to crack is is yes, it's his brother. Yes, his brother has a legacy left behind, and all of those are really important. But it's also going to be the accumulation of every other little thing that he's been fighting for the entire time. And all of the things he's lost because of it, because while while Shades did say it as dumb as Black RX could be, Black RX was also really sad. Yeah, especially at the end when the two parents get killed off. Mm-hmm. Like it, that. It, <laughs> I, I swore I, at some point I was wondering if uh, Gen Urobuchi and Yoshiki, Yoshiki Tomino were both writing those episodes at the same time. <laughs> Like it was a joint that, venture. That episode, like, yeah, later on, the whole thing of the, the, the leader of Crisis being revealed as the giant fucking head and Das Mater, which, fucking Christ, that's so fucking... <laughs> that's a different discussion, though. <laughs> that is, that is definitely a different discussion. But, like, that scene where General Jar kills the two parents, leaving those kids orphaned and, and, and traumatized in such a way like that that is those kids are gonna have to go through some shit ton of therapy after that, that shit that felt like something written by tomino or Udo right mm-hmm. so that yeah, just that, felt like it so just to, 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 yeah and yeah the last this was the last thing that kotaro had was the legacy of his brother sacrificing himself to being finally regaining his humanity at the end and now you've even stolen that from him Yep. Oh yeah, that build up. Oh, ho, 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 ho. It's and that's last... gonna be. It, yeah, I, I was gonna say it's the, it's the last fucking straw of all last fucking straws loaded on every camel ever. And that's where Sukasa and the gang step in. Their job is to remind him of what it means to be a common rider. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To keep him from going overboard. Yeah. I will I will note that when I was right when at the t- when I was writing um house rules when when it came to Rider the Transformation I actually considered having an alignment system between justice and vengeance but I couldn't figure out how to balance it. There are a lot of writers out there that tend to do shit for revenge. Exactly. That's And what's really bad is you can't say that vengeance isn't just. Is, that's a good that's a good morality system we need to talk about on something else at some point. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now so that uh. Now the question that I have for this is would you, would you use this arc to reveal who's under the mask? Or would you keep that a secret? Well, I think we kind of have to at that point because mm-hmm. it would establish that this isn't Nobuhiko. No, because just because black uh, you know, Kamen Rider Black saying uh, that it isn't his brother because he knows his brother's dead is going to be more than enough. I think actually keeping Shadow Moon Mask is more impactful in the end because at that point 
uh, he, he he would like Tsukasa and Daiki be like, does it really matter? You know who your brother was, and you don't need to know who this guy is. And Kotaro choosing not to unmask the guy would be more impactful because it, it would show that he could at least move beyond some of the trauma of the past. By not unmasking this guy and saying, I know my brother, I know what he was like, he is still with me, and that this person may have chosen to use his name, but could never be him, mm -hmm. and then he just walks away, that would actually be more impactful for Kotaro. And it would also kind of fit in with all the themes of black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're, we're trying to keep true to the worlds we're going to as well as to decades. So mm -hmm. Shadow Moon can just be Shadow Moon. We don't, we don't need a person behind him to make Shadow Moon effective. Shadow Moon is effective as Shadow Moon. Yeah. And then when you keep bringing Shadow Moon back in the later movies, it won't feel as, di as disgusting that you keep dishonoring him like that. Yeah. Because we, now, we know it's somebody else under that hood. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because it's it's fairly it's fairly like it's fairly likely that th that they could what would make it what probably makes what probably makes it even more infuriating for him is that it is that the king the kingstones are surgically implanted into the bodies of the ki of the candidates so yeah he so so um when shocker probably recovered his body they had they had to. They had to go. They had to dig in to get the thing out. Yeah, they would have had to autopsy the cadaver, and I don't imagine Shocker doing that in a graceful or dignified way. I imagine Shocker just going, "We know where the thing is. Grind him into dog meat until it pops out." Because mm -hmm. it's Shocker. Yeah. Shocker is meant like legitimately. I, I'm gonna say it. The entire reason they named Shocker Shocker was because Shocker was meant to be disgustingly and shockingly evil for no point than to be evil. I do remember the first implying that it was an acronym and also implying that they had association with the Nazis. I'm not talking about the first, which came mm. years after Decade. I'm just I'm just bring I'm just bringing that I'm just bringing that up for the purpose of do, of totality. Um, I I understand. Yeah. I just I I like Common Rider the first. I like the return of the original Takeshi Hongo. I uh, uh I just there are some things again that right there shocker being a an acronym that was I felt that was <sighs> really dumb. Yeah. Yeah. And, anyways. Yeah. Um. Now, now that with that done, we've got one last tribute world left. That being the world of world. Amazon. Amazon. Now, this is where things get very tricky. Is there a reason we're skipping the world of X Rider? That wasn't done in the series. I checked. Oh, that's that. true. Mm. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I double checked because I was I saw it too, and I'm like, wait, I don't remember X having a tribute episode in decade. Let me check. Oh, nope, wasn't in. Mm. So yeah, that, yeah. No, I just Amazon had the list of the writer last... worlds. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Obviously, we can't get the original Amazon back, and honestly, I'm I'm wondering how we could do this. Like, is know, this a is this a point where we should do this? That's what I'm thinking too. I'm thinking this might be the one arc we nuke. Cuz there wasn't and... there wasn't really anything added upon and the ro the rogues gallery with the rogues gallery with Am with Amazon when the, when it's been attempted to say that the, that those big bads were still an incarnation of shock uh or a incarnation of great leader never was really able to stick simply because of the weirdness that was Amazon. I mean, a, a, a I mean, Incan cyborg surgery with, with a magic, with a magic bracelet. I got a, um, I got an idea. Uh, we're, we're, this, this was a, you know, we, we stepped into the world of black, which is Showa era. And, you know, Amazon, the original Amazon is also Showa era. Mm -hmm. And rather than world of Amazon, why not World of Common Rider? 
the original. Ah. First of all, it, it can help Tsukasa and Daiki both see the origin, what a common writer truly means to be. Mm -hmm. And of course, it gives us a chance to pull, you know, a uh, beloved Japanese icon. He'll come back. You know he will. He came back for the first. Mm -hmm. um, and he can come back not only to show them, you know, we were also used by an evil organization, but instead of hating the power we had, we used it to bring good to the world. Mm hmm or instead of using that power selfishly, we used it to bring good to the world. And then, of course, he can also give them a few hints and tips. You know, never let Shocker convince you of what's real. Things like that. Mm -hmm. It can be a sort of primer. Uh, a, uh, a, a foundation to set up the not writer war we're going to have. Because that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, the not writer war we're having, because fuck that. Uh, but set up the for the for an ending arc that rushes towards revealing, uh, you know, Narutaki as as uh, the real great leader, and uh, that he's been the one spreading all the propaganda, and that it's always just been propaganda, mm -hmm. and that they really want. Decade and D-End back, and if they can't get Decade and D-End back, they're just going to kill them and take what they have. And that if, you know, you, you could even have a whole, we're going to hold your entire old world hostage, and if you don't give us what we want, we're just going to blow it up. Because it's Shocker. Mm -hmm. Shocker would do that. Give us what we want, co either come back or, you know, sacrifice yourselves and let us take it from you. Or we do X, Y, and Z. And yeah. so you have you have the world of common writer just before you start that build up to the climax to give a sense of totality. We've we've had the totality of Heisei. We've had some dip into the darker side of Showa. And now you go back to the root. Mm -hmm. You go back to the root and you have Ichigo and Nigo tell decade and the end this this is where everything starts. And this is where you have to make everything end. And yeah, we and we can do that. Have a have a last fight. We'd bring back uh, Ichigo and Nigo for that one. And then, because we're pretty much gonna, from here on out, we're pretty much just going all in on story. The last few episodes in the movie are just kind of all kind of blend in together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This the next world they end up going to is a world they visited that they. We don't we, we go we go full circle. We go back to where we started. Back to Natsumi's world. Because there is one other thing we should start establishing by this point, especially if we're gonna end up using it in the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we at this obviously while they were visiting the world of Kiva, Kevala the little Kevala shows up. Mm -hmm. We kinda have to introduce that. Who we, and, we can probably I, we can probably establish as Kivat Bat's bratty little sister, <laughs> because yeah. she wasn't here too. Yeah. So we need to start setting that up so that when the movie comes and that big thing is dropped, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Natsumi, having joined them on this journey, seen all these worlds, met all these heroes, learned all these lessons. Now we start to get her a little you know, tired of having to deal with all this shit and not being able to help. Now, this this brings me to this brings me to one to one thing I'm to one thing I'm curious about. In in Kiva, it was it was made very it was made very clear that a human trying to take the powers of trying to take the powers of Dark Kiva would have a would shorten their life. In fact, that was that was the reason why what what that was the re, that was the reason why um why he and why he ended up dying he because he in fact he in fact even even the first time he took he took the bite it was very painful mm -hmm. and i w and i the i would like i would like to go with the to go with the approach of um Either either Kivala either Kivala sees sees the idea of drinking a human's blood somewhat uncomfortable, um, 
and and makes it makes a makes a remark on that on that regard or or um it or it's more of a case of if you if if you if i dr if i drink from you and you at, and you end up and you end up becoming a writer you won't, you won't be you won't exactly be com completely yourself anymore you'll be more you'll You'll be you'll be a little you'll be a little bit more like a fangire. And I think the arc for this final these final couple of episodes, while Sukasa and Kaito are dealing are prepping up and facing some of the last bit of remnants of the of Shocker before the big fight, mm -hmm. Natsumi is contemplating that decision. Yeah. And Deep. while at the end of this arc she won't take that deal. It sets it up so that when the time comes, she'll take it. Again. She will end up taking it in the movie. Yeah, the approach that I'm going with are is the, and this is and this is a question that she that Kivala would probably would probably ask Natsumi. Are you are how are you it are you willing to give up your humanity for someone else? Is the is the approach that is the approach that I'm ultimately taking, which makes sense. This way, we can lead into the movie, mm -hmm. where now it's time to bring everything to a head. This is now up until this point. I don't think Narutaki's revealed himself to the heroes as the great leader of Shocker, but this is where he starts to make his big move. He's now, thanks to Sakasa and Kaito, they've unknowingly connected the worlds for him. And he's finally ready to reveal himself and make his attack on all the worlds. Mm -hmm. So we start with that, with him sending out shocker grunts all over the place. And we see shots of all the different worlds and all the writers having to fight off this onslaught of shocker, gr of shocker grunts and monsters just all over the place. I would and also we... I would also add when it comes to this that the that the places that the, the places that shocker grunts are attacking are linchpins i.e. they are they are they can they can be util they can be utilized as a as a bridge to bet between worlds but at the but at the same time there's a there's a there's a there's a double edged sword with these things because they're more like they're more like sluice gates for a dam. Yeah. And if the if these and if too many of these end up getting end up getting destroyed, then the then obviously the dam breaks, and the and the um. And the and all and um the war and the line between the worlds starts to break with it. Ooh, I think I have an idea with that, but I'll get to that later. Because the approach that I want to go with is that they're not just they're not just attacking the writers. the the attacks the attacks that the ra the random attacks are a, are a distraction. Their real goal their real goal is. To just is destroying the barriers between the worlds. Because if they they think if they destroy the barriers between the worlds, it'll combine all the worlds and it'll be one giant world under shocker control. Yes. Yeah. And I and I think we're all on the same page here. Then so yeah, they go on this big attack, and of course one of the worlds is going to be Natsumi's world, where Kaito and Sukasa are still hiding out. Thus, they're having to help in the fight. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, eventually they go to make their, they have to make their, like, after a worn out battle, they're exhausted, they're beaten down, but they're going to make their move on Shocker because they've got to put an end to this. And by coincidence, Shocker decides to, to make their main base in that world. Like, that ends up being their base of operations because they figure there's no writer here right now. This would be a great place to hide out, not knowing that Tsukasa and Kaito are there. Well, and the fact that Eiichiro is Ika Devil um, could have been a foreshadowing to the fact that the main Shocker base was there all along. 
you know what? Good, fair point. I think we could go with that instead. Because, because well, I mean, you, they really wouldn't send Ika Devil to just one world by himself. He was always a little more important than that within Shocker. Yeah. Um, I said at least. And so, yeah, I know, under, understatement of the century, I know. Um, <laughs> and so the fact that Ika Devil is there means that the great leader has sent him there means that uh, they, their main base has always been there, but they didn't realize Tsukasa was there when he finally arrived there. And they also didn't realize that that was one of DN's hideouts, like we established earlier. Um, so they were... <laughs> they always say it's darkest underneath the lamp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So both were hiding from each other underneath each other's light without knowing it. Um, <laughs> Ika Devil didn't report Sukasa for one because he had been there long enough to have a family. He saw that Sukasa had no memory, so Sukasa couldn't use his decade powers from them anyway anymore. And it wouldn't matter. He's he's a, he's a neutralized threat, according to Ika Devil. Just a new, the guy doesn't matter anymore. He's harmless. And then when all the stuff starts up, Ika Devil really doesn't have a, you know, doesn't have the time to go back and report that. Oh yeah, he's been here this entire time because he doesn't want to get punished. Because he knows the great Plus, leader would punish him for that. Plus, with him having being dragged along for this journey, you know, he wouldn't have. He has a no time to, to escape. Back. Yeah. Yeah, but throughout the journey, again, Ijiro, his personality sees all this, everything that's going on, and that side of him starts to, will be starting to fight back once he's even after Doctor Shinigami reveals himself. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and that would be, you know, that's all going to be um, various ways that the connection between Shocker and Hikari Studio finding out about each other never really came to pass until Shocker made their big move. Um, not to mention the fact that since it's only Hikari Studio that's moving from world to world and not the entirety of Natsumi's world moving along, they would have never known that uh, that there was more to their world since it was only Hikari Studio moving. Yeah. They would have just been like, oh, Ika Devil went off to scout out the enemy or plan something more uh, more heinous and sinister or further our cause. He is a big general in our fucking army. He, he's going to do these things. He's probably been told by Great Leader to go do great things, and that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. and, and so, like I said, the fact that he's there at the beginning and that he's going along with them is all going to be foreshadowing for the fact that the that the main shocker hq was in their world all along makes sense also since we are establishing this idea that ijiro and dr shinigami will become two different personalities i think at some point dr shinigami needs to break out and separate those two into two separate entities because we're gonna have to have the Ika devil fight like yeah. we're gonna have to have him as a fight but we don't want to kill the old man either um an easy way to do it is that he is that he got captured by Shocker and they found a way to extract him. Yeah, hey, that's what I'm thinking. Do something like that so that, that Ijiro can just stay captured and he can be rescued by Kivala. He can be rescued by Natsumi. Mm -hmm. Easy fix there. No. You're going to need her to do something. She just, you know, but have Dr. Shinigami on his own now and be able to become Ika Devil and fight Tsukasa and the gang. No, no better better. The separation has to be done by one of the writers. Because you have it that you know, they all know Eijiro. They've been around him for a while and Dr. Shinigami and the Ikadeva battle have to happen. But nobody wants to kill him because it's Eijiro. You can't let Eijiro die. Someone, whether that's Decade, whether that's the end, whether that's Kivala is going to find a way to separate him and honestly i think it should be decade and kivala working together Ooh, 
I was thinking Cavallo on her own, but I, I like where you're going with that. Mm-hmm. Well, because I'm thinking turn a zero somehow. Use use imagine to separate a zero from Doctor Shinigami, and to to get imagine powers at that time, you're gonna need decades power from Deno. Mm-hmm. Because the Imagine have always been a separate being inside another body. And they don't necessarily have physical bodies of their own. So, in this case, you could say that maybe maybe there's a clone Ika Devil body somewhere in the Shocker base. That would make sense. Indeed. Like, they'd have a cyborg body m- built of him somewhere. Mm-hmm. And so, when you use the Imagine powers to turn Dr. Shinigami slash Ika Devil into an Imagine, he... Uh, shunts to his clone body because now he doesn't have the body he was once in anymore mm-hmm. and Ajiro is freed from his control. Okay, okay. I'm going to make a slight adjustment to this idea. I like all of this except for one aspect. It's not so, going to be Decade. It's going to be the end. Okay, okay. Because he'd, prob- end- he'd probably want his old he'd probably want his, his old partner back. Yeah, well, the, yeah. And the thing is, is that Decade can transform into riders, but the end can summon them. Yeah, he could we did establish summon that. an Imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and he could turn and he could turn Doctor Shinigami. You know, somehow somehow with the powers of, of the Deno world, and you know, we've seen the powers of a world be used in weird ways before. We can we can bluff this one away as well. Mm-hmm. Um, turn Doctor Shinigami in an into an Imagine that's inside Ajiro's body, and then they use that. And then he then he runs away to his clone Ika Devil body oh, somewhere else. Oh oh oh! All three. Here's how we do this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Doctor Shinigami's facing down the three cast, get, and it stops the three riders from getting to the great leader. There, there. He's their last. He's the last line of defense. Of course, Natsumi reveals herself, and Ichiro's side starts to fight back. Mm-hmm. Wants to break free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then Kaito uses his uses a a ride a common ride card to summon an Amaji, who then possesses uh, Doctor Shinigami, then and transforms into Deno. Then Sukasa comes up and final form rides him, because what happens when you final form ride? Yep, yep. He transforms into Momotaro's. And it ejects the other body. Yep. It would eject Dr. Shinigami's spot, soul out and sets that whole set thing up. Yeah. And then once Eijiro is freed from Dr. Shinigami and Dr. Shinigami gets into his clone body, it becomes Ika Devil. We have the Ika Devil fight, which we had we had great stakes because we didn't want to kill the, kill the old man. And now the old man is saved through ingenuity and... Uh, Quick thinking from mm-hmm. our Phantom Thief crew here, yep. and uh, and then the Ika Devil fight happens. They beat up and kill Ika Devil. Ajiro saved, and we move on to the next phase of break of breaking out and breaking down Shocker. Yeah, like I said, he'd be the last line of defense, and I would have Kivala deliver that finishing blow. Yes, there absolutely, one, because it's going to be a big thing. moment for her. There is one thing that I that I did that I did want to do when it came to when it came to Kivala. Um, I, you know how you know how I mentioned that o- when Otoya would transform into Dark Kiva, it was painful. Mm-hmm. Um, I am considering having it that the first tra- the first transformation, it is, it's not a, it's not as painful as Otoya transforming into Dark Kiva. But it ain't. But it isn't. It was. It isn't exactly pleasant. Since yeah, we actually need to establish that. Actually, we forgot to even establish how yeah. that's set up. Because I think what it needs to be is, I would say maybe a third or a quarter of the way, uh, quarter, third, like somewhere near the halfway mm-hmm. point of the movie. We have a moment where Kival, where Natsumi, where where De- the decade and the end are beaten down. Mm-hmm. You know, a whole group of monsters have surrounded them. They're they're basically they weren't taken out as many as they can, but they're on their last legs. They're not going to last much longer. And mm-hmm. Natsumi's off to the side, seeing this unfold, and, and because this is the only safe place she can be right now is near them. 
And she's just like, what do I do? What do I do? And then she remembers Kevala. And Kevala's with her. But she remembers yeah, that I, deal from the last episode. Yeah, the the deal that, that she the the deal that she made so long ago in the actual in the actual uh episodes of the, since we're in the movie now. Mm-hmm. Um that where Kivala said, Would you sacrifice everything for someone else? Would you sacrifice being human for someone for him? And she remembers that. Yeah, we can flash back to that episode. Exactly. And then she was like, Kevala, I'm ready. Just- Mm-hmm. Of course, Kivala is probably going to be like, "Wait, what?" Yeah. So that's when we have her debut, and she, you know, there'll only be a couple left, but she'll basically have their little, little bit of god mode, god mode there, because you debut god mode, you always have that shit. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Any new form debut that? also has god mode too, usually. Yeah. And. So that, that way we establish that. Mm-hmm. Now, I would say, after we get done with Ika Devil, Kivala, or Natsumi takes Ijiro and gets the hell out of there. You know, we yeah. can't, have, as much as we'd like to have her in the final fight, no. We gotta, it's gonna be Kaito and Tsukasa at the end, fighting um, the great leader. One, one bit of, one bit of a side question that I have is, when it, when it, when, not, when, um, when it comes to when it comes to Natsumi, would you have would you have her appearance change and change any outs, outside of the transformation to reflect that for all she's intents and purposes, she's partially Fangire now. Yeah, she's no longer completely human. We should. We absolutely should have some sort of small change. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Well, ne- I, I hate to you- do this. Cause I, I hate to do this because it's a because it's a because uh, it's a it's a it's a meme. And it was a meme even back then. It's been a meme for a long time, but it's a meme for a reason. Natsumi's all already kind of youthful, and she has very youthful nicknames given to her by by um, by Tsukasa and by mm-hmm. Daiki. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think we need to give her the youthful fangs. Hmm. Something subtle, not too and easy to CG in, and not have to have all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because that's that's gonna it's gonna be subtle, and it can be pointed out eventually by someone who pays attention, like Sukasa. Um, you know, when it, when did that happen? And she asks what, and, you, and he points out her teeth. Yeah, holds um, up a mirror. And... Pro- probably have ha- a little moment. Yeah. I, It'll I, be a sm- small comedy moment for the closing of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's the best change as well because, uh, as as I said, the useful things is a it, it's not only a, a meme; it's an actual fashion point in Japan, and has been for twenty plus. Years. People actually go to dentists to get their teeth made to look that way. Um, so, you know, she's she's already a little she's already treated a little cute like a cutie younger sister by Tukasa and by uh, Daiki. So I think it suits the it suits them. They're going to now tease her about it even more, and she, you know, that's that's just gonna that's gonna add to the comedy. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. getting back to the final fight. Now we're down to the last three. You know, we've taken out some, most of the generals. And we now we're down to Tsukasa, Kaito, and Narutaki. Who finally reveals himself as the great leader of Shocker. Mm-hmm. Just and of course, some... this is when we have the CGI shit going. This is where yeah. the CGI kicks in high gear. Um, Because... Yeah, you're would gonna you, have to do that because. Sorry, go ahead. Would you, give, given this, given this kind of thing, first, first, first off, um, are we still? I, th- I think we're, I think we're likely still keeping who Shadow Moon is a mystery. Yep, we're um, still keeping that. Are we keeping what? King Dark? That's a tough one. I don't think we need to. 
I mean, if we want to do that, we can say that the Great Leader fuses with King Dark. Mm -hmm. Because we need to take both of them out at once. Yeah. But I think that's unnecessary steps, to be honest. I do, too. I think, like I said, if we had to keep King Dark, that's how we could do it. But I don't think we need to. Uh, alternatively, al alternatively, because Narutaki likes to wear disguises, you could say he was posing as King Dark at first. Or King Dark, and he's the great leader. And he was doing it to, to misdirect and... and Lee and cause further mayhem. I think, that, I think that's to, I think that's getting into Xanatos Gambit levels levels of shit. I mean, <laughs> he, he kind of has been with the way we've rewritten. He's kind of been doing Xanatos Gambit levels of shit. Um, taking over entire worlds, mm -hmm. spreading propaganda against writers rather than just being a prophet. Um, yeah, showing so up maybe have that be has. One of the forms he can take is King Dark, and just go that route. Yeah, I'm w I'm willing to go with that. Um, Thus, is that, we can that, do kind of what we ended up doing in All Riders versus Die Shocker. Yo, have Kaito be the one to you know? It, it actually makes even more sense for Kaito to do this now because they're partners. They're they're partners in crime, so he would be the one to say, "All right, I've done my part. Now it's time to finish this final form ride for decade." You know, we'll we'll summon we'll summon you know Common Rider J final form ride for decade. I think that whole thing works out, and you know, given that we're doing this, we can bring all the other riders in to help out with the final fight. Actually, this would be the perfect time to do it because, yeah, there, yeah, there's this whole thing of them trying to break down and fuse all the worlds. But the thing is, that works both ways, because by fusing all the worlds, you just made it all that easier for them for the other riders to find you. Yeah, I think that's what we should do. Like, as they're finishing up the fight, once they get to Narutaki, Narutaki reveals himself as the Great Leader and then says, but you're too late. Our mission is complete. The worlds are now joined as one. And then now, that's when, like, and then Kaito and Zeke are like, thanks. You just really made our job easier now. What? All of a sudden, you see, you, you cut to all the other riders kicking ass working their way into the building and they all meet up at the la uh, for the final fight. Mhm. Mm yep. And for this I would try and get as 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 many as many of the suits as possible. Um that shouldn't be too hard. Including including most even though including the including the Showa era and including even though he even though he is ridiculously out of place in these scenes Shin I still find it funny that Shin's a part of that because it just he, he sticks out like a sore fucking thumb in there. Yeah. Like you see all these other like really shiny suits and all the all this like like flat plastic and everything all nice and clean and then and then there's this grotesque monstrosity sitting there on the far end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of these things just doesn't belong here. But if we're but if the movie is supposed to be called All Riders vs. Die Shocker, we kinda have to deliver. Yeah. <laughs> Sad but true. So yeah, we, we then we can kinda that's how we can wrap things up, is that yeah, kind of, you know, great leader reveals themselves, transforms into King Dark, with all the riders watching and like, okay, what the crap do we do now? Sakasa's so like, partner, we got this, right? Right. Final form ride. And you know the rest. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's when Jay shows up too. It's like everyone else is like, everyone else is like on the ground and like, hey, are we missing somebody? Mm -hmm. Um. Oh yeah, forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Now in in the original film, we that was where we got that was where we got the first inkling of something that would be a tradition throughout the coming years of previewing the next writer. Um, oh yeah, the early bird cameo. Mm -hmm. I do. I do want to keep that in, but I'm not putting it in this fight because that because there's not really a point where it would where it would fit. No, it, it'd have to be as they're coming up on the great Le on the Shocker Castle. Mm -hmm. Like we have a general out there who's ready to kick some ass. I don't. I I don't want to use Shadow Moon anymore because I think I would say he should have been defeated. 
and just completely destroyed in the fight yep. with Black and Black RX. We need to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. So maybe Apollo Geist, since we'd be establishing him, like throw yep. him in there. And then, you know, have a scene very similar to All Riders where Double just kind of pull, rides up, kicks his ass, and then just tells the other guys, and then, and then have Philip go, all right, time to go. Oh, come on! Like, that scene was fun. I'm sorry, yeah. we're keeping that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I'm I'm, per I'm perfectly fine with it. Would you also would you also keep the whole ga the whole gag of what's a black rider? That was a green rider. Black? He's green. Either or. <laughs> yeah, no, we're keeping that. That's too it's too fucking funny, man. Mm -hmm. That works too well. We got to keep that. Yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm not I'm not de I'm not debating that. <laughs> now, like I loved that scene mm -hmm. when I was wa when I first watched that movie. Yeah. Now, when it comes now, throughout all throughout all of that, so we do we ha we have that se we have that set up, and at, I'd say after I'd say after this, that is that is more or less the end of Narutaki slash Great Leader. Yeah, and uh, that shit. We don't need him coming back as five different generals along the way, motherfuckers. No. <laughs> um. And. But I. Sorry. But um, when it. Now, I w even with that, I would still have it that the that the worlds are st that um, would you still have it that the worlds have are n are now fused, or would you have that be or do you have that um, be be undone? No, we keep them fused because the whole point of decade was to kind of bring the worlds together so that you know we wouldn't have that problem with crossovers and other things in the future. That mm -hmm. was the whole end game goal of decade as an anniversary series. So I think we keep that. Right. And that makes it a little easier for the ending so that, you know, Sukasa says, well, I guess this is our home now because it's everybody's home. Mm -hmm. I would, it works out too. I would be willing to have him, to have him decide to go, decide to go exploring because even though this is his home, as far as he, as far as he's concerned, um, while he while he's regained his memories, there's still a lot that's changed because having having all those worlds fused means that means that ta means that time has to compensate. And I will admit, with this time compensation thing, if anybody if any of you have played through the Legacy of Kane games, then you'll yep. kind of have an idea of what of what I'm going with. And Zan, since you're as familiar as I am, would you mind? Um, explaining what explaining what my plan is with this. I actually am not sure which part of Legacy of Cain you're wanting to use here. I know that there's a lot of time fuckery that could be discussed I'm, here. I'm referring. I'm referring to. I'm referring to the rules and how and how time travel is treated, especially in Soul Reaver Two. Okay. Okay. I, uh, the rules of time travel in Soul Reaver 2, that, that is, do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine, let me, let me handle this, you big baby. Uh, uh it's, it's your time to shine, go for it. <sighs> the, the, the print, the principle of it, the principle of it is, if, you if you if you go if you go back and change history you didn't change history history was all history was always in that way yeah that's and with with that's the that's the approach that en that ends up go that I'm going with all of the ch all the changes from the world from the world's fusing history has to ship has to shift and course itself around the way the way a, the way a river would move ar would move around a stone in order to so, in order to make everything work so it automatically that's kind of, corrects mm -hmm. that that's kind of what crisis on infinite earth tried to do for dc comics was they they tried to reestablish a new timeline to explain how all these worlds could come together well let's let's be fair there crisis on infinite earths did not make all the worlds come together. The Anti-Monitor killed them all. Mm -hmm. 
I'm still trying to establish, you know, an analogy for those who don't play the Legacy of Games. It's something a little easier for us to digest. In, in, in essence, what it means is because of the fusion, all of the histories of the worlds have to intermingle and automatically correct to come up to the point in history that we currently find ourselves at the end of the movie. Just like yeah. in Legacy of Cain, going back in the past, changing something, coming back to the present, history self-corrects so that that history was always valid. Mm -hmm. That's what happens here with the fusion. All of the histories of all of the worlds self-correct so that all of the histories are valid. And Makes sense now? Mm -hmm. Good way to put yeah. it? Summary? Nice summary? Yeah. <laughs> I think that works. And because because of because of that, Sukasa has a, has a reason to to explore, because of the fact that for all, for all intents and purposes, even though this is his home, it's still a completely new world for him. Yeah, and that would explain why he's always wandering around and not just staying in one place anymore, mm -hmm. like he would like, when he ends up going up in other uh, crossovers. Yep, yeah. and. And essentially, what that what that uh what that what that also does is, you know, his memories while he got them back, it, and because of the changes in the story, everything is going to feel fresh and new. Mm -hmm. the, the The world itself is new because of all of the self corrections, but there are always going to be familiar aspects of it because of the other worlds that they went through and his own world he came from and everything else. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be, he'll see something that reminds him of a memory he'll, and he'll understand that that's familiar. But now the familiar is leading him to the unfamiliar. Yeah. And that's why that's why he'll have that, the continue to have his wanderlust. And so and because of that you can do you can do the scene that you can do the setup that's seen so often in in many common writer series of the hero the hero writing off um which of course uh now that Natsumi has uh taken the dive to be a common writer she's going to go follow him uh, I had I had considered I had considered one particular gag where not where not where Natsumi has set up a coffin in her room and Kivala's flies in going Natsumi what the hell are you doing <laughs> No you see that that's the uh that's we can still have that gag because it's going to be uh Daiki and uh Tsukasa talking both of them are going to adventure Daiki to search for more treasure cuz that's his thing to Casa to see more stuff. Yeah. They're going to talk a little bit. They're both going to go their separate ways into the sunset. Mm -hmm. And then the gag is Natsumi setting up a coffin in a room. Ivala comes in. What the hell are you doing, Natsumi? And Natsumi's like, what? I'm a vampire now, aren't I? Ivala goes, well, not exactly. And then, wait, 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 that's not important. They're leaving, you idiot. Mm -hmm. And yeah. she's like, wait, what? Here's the thing, though. I actually disagree with her following Sukasa. I think they should have, you know, I think she should stop Sukasa before he takes off to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. Because she's now a common writer and her town might just need a protector. I I do like that and I would I would like to take a step further that sh that Sukasa t Sukasa tell tells her that um the, that, the, that um, just just because Shocker is done doesn't mean doesn't mean someone else isn't going to turn up. And and we and already know somebody else is going to turn up because we saw uh double. But it's it's in it's inevitable, and the and your t and and your home does and your home doesn't didn't have a protector. That's why that's why things went so bad at the at the start of this adventure. That's not the case anymore. I am. I am not. I am not that kind of writer. I am. Ju I'm just one who passes through. You know, pr bring a bring a bit of a bring a bit of a callback to that whole just a passing through common writer, saying, I am not the. I'm saying I am not the writer who st who stay who stays in who stays and defends a place. I'm the one who passes through.
Yep. That would work too. I could see that happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the thing the thing is is that is that I I when you when you consider when you consider a lot of the catchphrases that ended up being emblematic of of a, of a certain writer or a certain character, especially throughout the Neo Heisei era, there's all it's always it always informs something about that character. Um, I'll you. Uh, with the with the most obvious case being double the whole now ca now count up your crimes. Omayo sumio kazaro. That aside from aside from the fact that it's t that it is it is one th is one taken from his from his mentor. It ha it ha it has a it has connotations in on multiple levels, both for the reasons yeah. that Sochki said it the first time in the in the better part of movie war core. I'm sensing a pattern here. <laughs> and Yeah, Riku Sanjo's a better writer. Yeah. Mm. And the and Who would thunk of it. And the <laughs> and the fact that throughout that throughout this that throughout the series, he's at, he's had his moments where he's had to answer for his for his own screw ups. Um And it and that was and that was a th and if you look at a lot of the if you look at a lot of the catchphrases that writers use throughout the Neo Heisei era, you still see this. Yeah, I think another good example of that would be Gimes. This is my stage now. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's he was always he was never in the front. He was never in the lead, but now he has the pa he has gained the ability to protect. He's the hero, mm -hmm. so it's his stage now to le to take charge. And the more the series goes on, the more that catchphrase really starts to take shape. Yeah. But with but de but decades phrase of just a passing through common writer, remember that, um, didn't ha didn't have the same level of impact. And I think I think by taking this approach, that he is not that he is not the def he is not the defending hero. He's just so he's just so he's just someone who c who can't who can't sit still. Um. Would f would certainly fit him. Yeah, I would like I can to make a that. very bad analogy, and I'm going to get so much hate for this. But we have just set the, with this setup, we have now turned Sukasa Kadoya into the common writer equivalent of Doctor Who. He already was. What are you talking about? <laughs> now more so. Mm. <laughs> but he already was. That's my point. You've just codified it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> um well w well it could well um there are there are wor there are worse there are worse attempts at a doctor who um like the current one oh i'm sorry i didn't even say that out loud. <laughs> i don't i don't know i don't know what you're talking about the ser the series went on hiatus after Cap after capaldi left <laughs> Uh, uh, we are, are we, have we already put this on the docket? Because I think we may have to put this on the docket. I have. I'm. Ju I'm just. I just. I just need. I just need time, because um, <laughs> I have. I'd have to find out a way to do this without losing my shit. <laughs> you just need time. That pun was fully unintended, and you know what? It still worked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I try. I try and be. I try and be as composed as I can. I try, but I know that. I know that if I end up tackling that, I'm going to. I'm going to cover something that is going to get me angry, and I'm not <laughs> going to be able to maintain that composure unless I <laughs> properly meditate beforehand. <laughs> uh, oh. It will. It will. It will eventually happen. I j I j and um I just I just need I just need the right moment. Um but when it com when it comes to when it, the other thing that I had the other thing that I had in mind at the end is when it comes to hit when it comes to his wanderings you can do a you can do a transition of say one year later or two years later or three years later where he where um he ha he happens to have taken a photo a photography gig in um in Futo. Ah, 
do what they started doing not long after where they started using the ending of one series to kind of guide into the next because they yeah. started doing that uh, I think they started doing that like right after O's mm-hmm. um what I'm I'm con- I'm considering I'm considering that let's say, let's say because let's say that he let's let's say for instance that he that he ends up t- that he ends up doing a he ends up doing a photography gig for um I'd s- there's there's two people I can there's two people I can think of it's it's definitely a gig that that he's photographing somebody modeling essentially but there are, there are two people I'm considering for this. One of them is Queen. One is Queen and Elizabeth. Um, the other is Wakana. I'd actually lean more towards Wakana because she was already established as a big star at mm-hmm. that point. I mean, the Healing Princess thing was pretty much there from the get go. Queen and Elizabeth really hadn't been like hadn't even been established yet, and honestly, yeah. They 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 weren't really starting to get noticed until the um, idol the Futo Idol episode, the Liar Arc. Oh God, mm-hmm. so, that arc! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a double fan. Even I thought that arc was crap. <laughs> and I thought that arc was unbearable. Though it did give us the awesome moment of Shotaro and Philip singing "Finger on the Trigger," so it's not all bad. Yeah, it all it also it also gave it also gave me the big the big. It also gave me a mo- also gave us a moment that w- that was so WTF that t- that TV Nihon had to break character. So uh <laughs> so shades in response to your it's not all bad. That's like saying that a paper cut on your balls is not all that bad. <laughs> uh, anyway. I hear you mo- I hear you imagining what I've just said. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, though we don't have to actually have Wakana in in this ending. We can just have him say like, "All right, so let's see, modeling gig and Futo. Let's see, Wakana Sonozaki. Oh, this ought to be interesting." Um, one thing, one thing that one thing that I that I I had considered is as he as he's setting up, um, some somebody decides. Somebody decides to walk in and and um, let and make sh- and and give him, quote unquote, words of encouragement. That person, in this case, being her father, Ryube. Oh God! And the whole the approach that I'm going with is that he is that he's his words technically are personable, but everything he says has a has an air of. You fuck even the slight. You screw even the slightest thing, or make her the slightest bit angry, and you're and you're going to be taking a a lo- a long sleep a long sleep at the bottom of the river. And to to really sink this home, to make this a true full on transition ending, as he walks away, he holds he pulls out of his pocket the terror memory mm-hmm. and just holds it. Out of sight of Sukasa, but just in his hand, just going like, "Yeah, you don't know the terror you're facing." Because obviously, in, even in this kind of situation, Suka- Sukasa would still he's even with all his memories re- restored, and even with um, everything that's happened to him throughout this story, old habits still die hard, and he is still a dick. Yep, he's a smug <laughs> jerk ass with a heart of gold. He is st- he is still a, he is still a smug jerk, and because because of that he because of that he would probably inadvertently needle Ryube. Inadvertently, no, he'd do it on purpose. <laughs> um, you know, some something of something of the mi- some 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 kind of remark of what you what you don't tr- you don't trust your f- you don't trust the photographer you're paying. A lot of confidence you have, old man, and that, that's wh- that's when he gets the warning. Mm. Um. And obviously, obviously, nothing happens, and it's just, and it's just a and it's just a photography gig, and then he and then he's going to be off somewhere else. I'm not having yep. I'm not having decade cameo and double in this in this continuity. No, 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 no. We're just, again, that's why I'm saying like Yube would hold the terror memory out of sight of Sukasa 
maybe you could have a thing where Sukasa does look over and thinks he sees something, but he doesn't. It, he doesn't actually acknowledge that he recognizes or sees what it is. Actually, how about this? What, what you end up see? I'm th what I'm thinking of. What I'm thinking of doing is he. You see, you see Ryubi walking, walking away from Sukasa down, a, down a long corridor, but you have that. Dis you slowly have that distortion where the corridor seems to stretch, and then you, s and then you see the, then you start to see, um, th you start to see the room darken, change colors, and you remember that blue stuff that he would, that he would summon as the Terror Dopant. Yeah. You start seeing, you start seeing more of that as he. He starts ch he starts chuckling and then you hear that laugh that that ma that gave people nightmares. <laughs> Wait, his laughter made gave people nightmares? I never knew that. Uh, I'm I'm highlighting the I'm highlighting the fact that he that even even when he's not transformed, he still scares people. Oh, I know. I'm just saying I never found him scary even just I, I, I think yeah i don't think i don't think this is something the audience would be scared of that they, they, they would definitely be like oh crap you know just like you know and they'd be invested enough that yeah to see that walking around like oh shit yeah that's your oh shit moment mm -hmm. that's for sure and now as far now obviously we're, we're not going to delve too deep into it but how much would we have to change regarding his appearance in Geo? Honestly, with what we've established, you wouldn't have to change much. You probably wouldn't have to change anything, to be honest. Yeah, because you, you, all you'd have to do is to... you'd actually have to change the end more than him. Yeah, because they aren't as much as at odds as they used to be. Um, I would, I would go with the notion that. Suka that Sukasa finds finds the finds the idea of G of Geo interesting and and would like to and would like to see exactly what he ends up what he ends up turning into, and wh whether which or was, not he, which was which more, was part, part of his part of his uh his impetus in the original show so yeah um, of whether or not he whether or not he's go if he if he's actually if he's actually going to become the kind king he says or or otherwise with the notion of that's a that's a bold strategy and it better pay off otherwise you and I are going to have problems. <laughs> yeah, Tsukasa would not be happy. Um, and when and as far as far as Daiki, he's pro he probably looks at the idea of ride watches as a as potential treasure for himself. Yep, that's Daiki for you. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing I would change is. I don't think he would directly work with the Time Jackers. I, I mean, yeah, he I, wouldn't I, have a reason to. Yeah, you, you could take that part out. He, he'll be there, and he may not exactly side with our heroes, but he's not going to join the Time Jackers. That makes no sense in this new timeline. After everything yeah, he's, he's done, been through. Yeah, he's he's more he's more interested in seeing where this world goes than destroying it like he would others. Plus, he's no longer the destroyer of worlds that he was at the end, uh, actual end of decade. So those, those are the those are the main changes we would have to make. Yeah. But beyond that, he could still basically do the same things he did in Zio, and we'd be fine. Now, when it comes, when it, I would, I um. I ha now when it comes to the when it comes to his appearance in that special that gave us the worst looking final No, no, no. <laughs> not 21 can fuck off. No. 21 can fuck off. No. Yeah, I would say on this mm. one. Fuck that noise. That's yeah. a nuke button right there. Fuck mm. that shit. Nuke that shit. That cape looks awful. That armor looks awful. That helm looks ridiculous. What the fuck? Go away. And, and you know what's worse about that? They debut this brand new armor, and he gets his ass kicked in it. He doesn't even get through one fight without getting his ass kicked in it. Yeah, no decade, decade, dec decade twenty one can uh can eat shit. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would pros- I would go with the idea that the Time Jackers try and re- try and recruit both um, both Sukasa and Daiki to further their plans, but and both but fail on both ends. Fa- um, I'd say I'd say both of, I'd say both of them lead lead the Time Jackers on, but they get what they want. But then but then sc- but then screw them over because one they know for one they know bullshit when they see it, and two. Um, People with people with those people with those kind of aspirations, and th- and willing to go to those kind of methods, are easy marks. Yeah, I'd actually keep Kaito's involvement during the Geo Two arc. I think I'd keep that relatively the same. Mm-hmm. Well, he was because, only there to get the treasure. Yeah, so that would it, it, that still makes perfect sense for him to do that and have the same consequences. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like he wasn't actually working for them. He was just trying to lead them on to get what he wanted. While at the same time, they were trying to lead him on to get what they wanted. Yeah, I think we should keep that the same. Like that part was perfect. Yeah, and when it comes to that kind of thing, you can have a you can have a gag you can have a gag of Sukasa going. You trying to you trying to steal you trying to steal a page out of my book, partner. <laughs> you don't have much confidence for a con man. Mm-hmm. I could, I could see Tsukasa saying that. Yeah, you'd be like, see, this is why I was the brains of the operation. This is why I was the, the talker, because you couldn't talk your way out of a paper bag. <laughs> you couldn't talk your way into a treasure vault. <laughs> Better way to get under his skin. You couldn't talk your way into a bank vault if you tried. Mm-hmm. Um, and... W- now, when it now, um, when it comes to, I'd I'd say when I'd I'd say I'd say I'd say aside from that, there's not a whole there's not a whole lot else I can think of that I would ch- that I would change, um, as far as far as the as far as the whole thing of his of him, hold him holding some of his power in his in his ride watch, um, I'd still I'd still keep that. Yeah. Yeah, holding back some of his point. power. Mm-hmm. That was that, that was a, his way to try and affect Sogo to help Sogo grow. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, that Tsukasa, well. that didn't fucking work. Sogo <laughs> is still a child. <laughs> oh man, we're gonna have to do a rebuilding Co at some point. That'd have to be a mini rebuild. We wouldn't have to go as deep on Geo, to be honest. Yeah. I'm put. Mm. I'm putting. I think there's I think there's a lot we could do with it there. I think there's a lot more than you're giving it credit for, especially since w- once we rebuild Sogo himself, how much of the story changes. <laughs> just remember, once you rebuild the main character of a show, things can get drastically different. That is that is a fair point. So I'll consider it, but I wouldn't. Ex- I wouldn't expect it to happen anytime soon. Anytime soon, since yeah, we've Zio did just other, uh, finish a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, plus we've got a few other series that are a little more high priority at this point. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying we we should probably do it sometime. Mm-hmm. But that's gonna that's gonna do it for that's gonna do it for this in for this installation of the of the Geek Watch. And as far as as far as what we've as far as what we've got next, um, next we're get next we're get after dealing with the fun stuff. Next we're dealing with something a little more serious because it's time. San, you know you know what's coming. I do. Mm-hmm. But that that's go, that's going to do that's going to do it for for us for this for this particular week, and of course. A sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come on and to come on to the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch. <laughs>